is college football on ABC Sports. The Hurricane faithful have had reason to cheer all year. Miami comes off its most impressive win of the season. Last week, a rout of Syracuse produced another Big East title with an offense that could not be stopped. And a defense that recorded its third shutout of the year. There was reason to smile in the Orange Bowl. Tonight's opponent, a Washington team that ended a streak back in 1994. And last season, blemished an otherwise perfect year. Under the lights of the Orange Bowl, with number one in their sights, and four national titles already in the books, tonight the Kings continue their drive for five. A sold-out Orange Bowl tonight as the Huskies come to South Florida in Miami in the Orange Bowl on a beautiful night in late November, a very, very important game. Our Thanksgiving feast presented by Siemens continues through our ABC weekend and our matchup, the number 11 team in the country against the second-ranked Hurricanes of Miami. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler with Bob Greasy. That number two is the BCS poll. Miami's number one in both major polls. They know with what's happened today and yesterday, they'll be number one in the BCS as well come Monday. You know, on our Thanksgiving feast, it was Nebraska getting stuffed. Oklahoma got sliced today, and now they don't want the dogs biting through their wishbone down here in Miami tonight, I'll tell you that much. And they remember three years ago when UCLA came in riding high, and they picked off UCLA and took their chances away. Bob, this is a game that was supposed to be played in September. It's been backed up to this night, and I think that helps Washington, doesn't it? It's supposed to be played the second game of the season. Cody Pickett, the quarterback for Washington, would have been playing and starting only a second game. Now he makes his 10th start of the year. He's 8-1 as a starter. He comes in here. He's going to have two problems. Number one is the loudness, the crowd noise in the Orange Bowl. Secondly is this Miami defense. They are ferocious. They are the top-ranked defense scoring-wise in the nation. You'll you're, have problems. You can hear it going on right now behind us. That's the noise problem. Kenny Dorsey had that problem, as you said, in Seattle last year. He's matured into a Heisman candidate. He played maybe his best game of the season last week. Boy, well, he had a bad game two weeks ago. Didn't throw a touchdown pass for the first time in his career. 23-1 and one now, threw four touchdown passes last week. Two to his wide receiver, Johnson. Two more to his uh, tight end, Shocker. This kid has one loss, as you mentioned. It was against Washington, and he wants some payback. He knows that people judge him by what he does against Washington. He wants to get him back tonight. He also has said the Huskies hit him late several times last year. In a game like this, as the Hurricanes take the field with the nation's longest winning streak of 19, and their first-year head coach looking to become a perfect 10 tonight. He ain't Bo Derrick, but he's been coaching him pretty well, and he's got a special teams that could be a big factor. The kicking game will play a big factor. Washington has had trouble blocking for their punter. Miami has been outstanding returning punts over the last two years. You can hear the magnitude of this game by the sold-out crowd. It's a throaty group of Hurricane fans thinking roses in Pasadena. 14 seniors play their final game here tonight, including those two big hosses. And Washington, always a thorn in their side, hoping it won't be a thorn that'll keep them from Pasadena. John and Terry coming up next. And John, with all that in mind, obviously there's a hurricane warning in the Orange Bowl for the number two team in the country set to try to move up to number one if they can get by Washington. So many great memories in this building. None any finer than Super Bowl 10. The one that someone once said could catch a snowflake in a wind tunnel. The ballet-like number 88, Lynn Swan, the most valuable player of that Super Bowl. And Swan, he's down at just about the same spot on the field as he was named the MVP. Third man in our crew, Lynn Swan. Swanee. Brad, thank you very much. It's amazing standing on this very spot how the impact of a few moments can change your entire career and indeed your entire life. Another person who understands that is the head coach for the Miami football team, Larry Coker. Because you see, September 9th, the year 2000, he was the offensive coordinator for the Miami Hurricane team as they played the Huskies in Seattle. They lost the first half of that football game. It cost them the whole game and a chance for the national championship. Today, 
He played the same Husky football team one year and three months later. And he is on the precipice of taking his team, given what happened on Friday to Nebraska and today to Oklahoma, to a national championship game. And it's amazing, guys, because this is a huge moment now for Larry Coker. He is center stage, Swanick. Miami won the toss. They deferred. Washington will be receiving Todd Seaver's kick. Kenny Dorsey will have to wait with his offense. As Miami, unbelievable at home. They only give up two points a game on this field. Well, you can be sure that Larry Coker reminded his players, and I'm sure they didn't have to be reminded of what happened yesterday with Nebraska and what happened with the Oklahoma. And, you, you know, you've got to go out and play the game, but, you know, let's, let's just do what we have to do, do the way we always do it. Alexander and Frederick are back to winning the kick. Seavers blast this one out of the back of the end zone. So the Huskies will work from their own 20. And here's the quarterback that Bob talked about, Cody Pickett. He's a tough cookie. 2246 yards 10 touchdowns missed some time with a separated shoulder still bothers him at times but he doesn't slide very often and he won't come out of a game unless you drag him out yeah he's a tough kid you can play with a separation no surgery will be required but when he gets it hit it hurts quite a bit Washington will open in a two tight end set Rich Alexis is the tailback, and he gets the call. He's a local product, and he gets four yards on the first carry. Washington offensively up front. Kyle Benn is the leader there. The guys around him, Barnes, Newton, Zajac, and Backert, were all untested when this season started. Willie Hurst we had listed as a starting tailback, but as you saw, Alexis carried it for the first time in the game. Walker, the fullback, Williams and Arnold, the wide receivers. Jeremy Stevens started in that two tight end offense. There he is, and he's back and healthy, and he's a huge target at 6-7. Second down and six, and the backfield is empty. Pick it down the middle. He hit Stevens, and he didn't hold it. Nice hit by Vilma, the middle linebacker, prevented the completion. Penalty marker on the far side of the field at the 29-yard line. Our referee is Jack Kramer. The illegal man downfield. Miami defensively. A lot of depth on their defensive line. McDougal, Joseph had a great game last week. Walters and Jamal Green. The linebackers, Williams, Vilma, who just made that hit, and Chris Campbell, Vilma, their leading tackler. Secondary, maybe second to none in the country as a group. Rumpf and Buchanan in the corners. Lewis and Reed are the safeties. This is an outstanding group, that secondary. Buchanan last week had a career day. Returned an interception for a touchdown, had a sack, a fumble recovery, and almost returned a punt for a touchdown. He was our Chevy player of the game last week. So Washington, it's going to be second down and 11 Washington now. wants to come out, and then you throw, throw quickly. Don't take a lot of time. Short drops, quick passes. High backfield. Pick it. Fires down the middle. It's intercepted by Jonathan Vilma. Vilma with a stiff arm down the sideline, and Miami's got the football. Well, Velma, Velma is right in the behind the uh, the linebackers. Go ahead and run it. Top of your screen, number uh, 51, right there, just cuts right in front of him. That's the 34th takeaway for the Hurricane defense this year, and it's their 18th interception. Vilma with a nice run back to the 13-yard line. That's where he sets his offense up. And now a hush comes over the crowd as Kenny Dorsey asks for quiet so he can hear his own count and his own thoughts. And he drops the throw over the middle, completes it inside the 10, and down near the 6-yard line. And that's Daryl Jones, a pickup of 7. Ken Dorsey. 
23 wins as a starter, 19 touchdowns, four of those last week. He holds the career passing mark at Miami. 54 touchdowns in a career, and he's only three years through his um, through his uh, career, college career. He's got another year left. Keep Shockey in mind the tight end. They love him down here close, but they'll run it. It's Portis, left side, touchdown. Washington didn't need this to happen. Well, this is not the way Washington wanted it to start. And Larry Coker in Miami has got to be careful that they don't get complacent with too easy and too quick a score. Seven-yard touchdown. But again, Vilma's the guy that set it up. Seavers for the extra point. It's good. From behind the defense, the blocking up front. Bibla comes over, gets a nice block. There's Shockey, 88. There's McKinney. Bibla. Woo. Bibla's there. Williams is 80. You don't need to move them much when you've got this offensive line. Just get a crease, and Portis gets through it. We're going to look at this thing every which way. We're going to dissect this thing. It's only a five-yard run. <laughs> but it's the first one. Hey, but it's Saturday night. That's right. <laughs> we got it. A two-play drive. And as Bob said, takeaways turn to points for this group. Well, we mentioned the defense in the opening. With one of the problems that Cody Pickett was going to face, the noise and the defense, and the defense just jumped up and bit him. So Seavers set the kick again. When Miami scores first, you can almost forget about it. This time, a knuckleball. They have to let it go, and it'll be a touchback. Rock Alexander downs it in the end zone. So Pickett, you wonder how shell-shocked he might be now. Well, this does not do anything for a quarterback's confidence to fly all the way across the country and then go against the number one defense in the country and then throw an interception on your first possession. That ain't good. So they'll huddle on the sideline and bring it out to the 20. There's the guy that spoiled his opening series, John Vilma. And again, the crowd comes to full throttle. Walker, the fullback, in motion. On the give, it's Alexis. Got about three. Rich Alexis, a sophomore out of right here in Florida, and says he still gets homesick. Well, he's back home now, but he's wearing a gold helmet. Last year, Rick Neuheisel said, I wanted to put him in so his folks could watch him back home. Well, 50 yards later, he had a touchdown. And he gets the start tonight because of Willie Hurst banged up his knee in practice. He had a broken finger in the game last week, so Alexis gets the start. And he gets the call again. Left side, Gilman's got him, but he drags people with him. Tough run. A good one for five. It'll be third down and three. And if you're wondering about Washington and how they get it done, Running the ball this year is not what they do. Nope. They're 95th in the nation in running the football, 15th in the country in passing. Keith Gilbertson, the offensive coordinator, who is 31 and 3 as an offensive coordinator at Washington, says this year we're throwing the ball. They're probably going to hear third down along three. Both wideouts to the near side. We haven't seen Reggie Williams yet. Their sensational freshman. He wears number one. Pickett. Throws short, and that's a first down. Got it out to the 34 to Paul Arnold, his other wide receiver. Well, that's exactly what the Huskies need. They just need some first downs. Settle down. Make some first downs. Three steps. Throw up and step up and throw it quickly. This offensive line is young. The defensive line for the Hurricanes is aggressive and have a lot of sacks. Rump made the tackle. But it's a first down at the 34. 
Now a three wide out grouping. It's a draw play inside. Alexis has some room to run this time across the 40. And he's out to the 41 as he got seven. Jamal Green tracked him down from behind. And now Alexis heading to the sideline. Keith Gilbertson, the offensive coordinator, has been around a lot of football. Been in the NFL, been to Washington and back a couple of times. The plays you see, the first 15 or 20 plays of this game, are the ones that he likes the best from watching tape of all the University of Miami games this year. Hurst comes in now at tailback as Alexis gets a breather. Second down, a long two. Pickett wanted to throw a slant. Dangerous pass that Buchanan almost grabbed. And Phillip is mad at himself for not holding on to that. You know, I think the, the Hurricane defense likes the scheme of this offense. That is, throw the ball. I think they like to play a passing team. Buchanan maybe should have had that ball. I think he was a little bit surprised that the ball was going to be thrown that late. Our first and ten brought to you by Chevy Trucks, and you can see the line is just across the 44, and that's Third down and a long two away. Empty backfield again. Pick it a pump fake, and now he's got a man wide open. What a one-handed catch by Hurst. How did he hold on to that thing? Caught it in the crook of his elbow, and it's a first down. Well, you've got to be able to throw to your backs. You just can't throw to your wide receivers. When you throw to your backs, you're throwing on versus the linebackers. Little pump fake. Look at oh, unbelievable wicked catch. Unbelievable. Hurst came in with 11 catches on the year. None better than that one. None better than that one. And they're in Miami territory at the 48 yard line. First down. Alexis back in there as Pickett drops the throw. And he goes to Alexis over the middle, and he's got another first down inside the 35 to the 34. Nice play selection. Nice mix up here for Washington. They pick up 13 more yards. Gilbertson is a master at calling plays. You know, it's it's him against this Miami defense, and they're very aggressive. Watch 24 coming out of the backfield, goes right through the line of scrimmage, and then goes across. Quarterback knows he's going to go to the little back there. Nice short throw, looks off the linebackers. Nice play. Rick Neuheisel looking on. His team comes in 8-2 and two on the season. Eighth play of this drive. Alexis again off tackle and a big over. Alexis might take it all the way down to the four-yard line, and there might be a face mask tacked on the end. And the local Florida products putting on a show for the hometown folks. Played at John Paul a second high school here in the Miami area, and he's off to a big start in the first quarter. Well, he certainly is. And this is this will help. There you got it, the face mask. This will help that passing game of Washington. From behind the defense. 67 is Newton comes across, gets a block. Reed can't make the tackle. There's the face mask. Right there. So it'll go half the distance to the goal, which isn't much of an addition, but it's a first and goal for the Huskies at the Miami 2. Washington comes in here with some confidence that they can beat this team. Let's see if Alexis gets the call again. He got him close. He's got it again. Miami's got him stuffed this time. Chris Campbell submarine underneath and then got help from his hurricane friends. And it'll be second down and goal. Miami has only given up nine touchdowns all year. That's nine touchdowns in nine games. And we mentioned they give up an average of only two points a game on their home field. They've gone about 17 quarters without giving up a touchdown at all, haven't they? One touchdown in the last 17 quarters. Second down and goal. Alexis again. Cuts back inside. He stopped again. Ooh. And the Hurricane defenders <laughs> come to meet him. Oh, yes. I think he should have gone outside. And he left his friends. His friends were going around the end, and he just cut up inside, and there was like three orange shirts. Led by Vilma, the middle linebacker, who's made the play of the game so far. There's Jonathan, and he's getting better every week. A young fella out of right here in Coral Gables. 
He didn't have to travel far to play linebacker for Miami. Third down and goal back at the three now. The 11th play of the Miami uh, the uh, Washington drive. Alexis behind his fullback. He won't get there. They tried Alexis three times. Three times he was denied by the Canes defense. And now Rick Neuheisel with a decision to make. I'm a little surprised down here three times and you run it every time. The first, the best, the best opportunity to throw inside the five is on first down when they're not expecting it. And the Huskies are going to go for it. Well, Rick said, expect some things unexpected. Expect some surprises, things we're going to take some chances with. First back in at the tailback. It's fourth and goal at the Miami one. And tripping is Pickett. Miami takes over on downs. I don't know if one of his linemen stepped on his foot or he slipped on his own, but there goes a scoring opportunity. He was stepped on for sure. Watch his foot. Oh, you can't tell there, but I can tell you from experience, he does get stepped on or tripped. Looked like his guard playing. pulled around and got him. Yeah. Let's take a look here. Yeah, he got he either got stepped on or tripped. That's the bad news. The good news is you lead Miami back inside their 10-yard line. Scoring opportunity goes by the boards. Miami leads by seven. Miami 7 nothing, and backed up at their own six-yard line after taking over on downs. And the penalty markers stop this one. Washington pointing fingers at the Miami line, as you might expect. Illegal procedure against Miami. Let's go back to the play that turned the ball back over to Miami. The, the center right here, watch him, watch his drop step. The center pin's going to drop a step right there Boom. and steps on his foot. That happens, that happens a lot, especially down inside the five, the four-yard line when the center, the guards want to take a drop step to get their blocks. Portis on the carry, and Portis is wrapped up in a hurry. He got very little. Miami offensively. Here's the big eaters, and this is as good a group as you'll find. McKinney, Wilkins, Romberg, Bibla, and Gonzalez. Portis, the tailback. Najee Davenport, the fullback. Johnson and Jones, the wideouts. And Shockey, one of the big-time tight ends in this country. And we spent some time with Jeremy yesterday. A fun-loving guy yeah. from Ada, Oklahoma. First thing about him when I shook hands, <laughs> how big his hands were. He's Boy. got some mitts. Oh, he's got some hooks. <laughs> Second down at 12 now. Dorsey, nice play fake, throwing from his own end zone. He's got his man, and it's Andre Johnson. And that's out to about the 13-yard line. Picked up eight defensively for Washington. Kai Ellis is an outside linebacker that plays like a defensive end. Roberson, triplet, one of the best tackles in America, and Josh Miller. The linebackers, Madavi, Willis, and Blanche. And the secondary, Lowe, Carruthers, Davis, and Massey. And Omari Lowe's had a heck of a season for him. And there's Larry Triplett. And he's a good player and going to be a good one at the next level. Third down and three. Dorsey getting some heat. Going long. Johnson out there just over his fingertips. Another two or three inches, and he catches that, and it's a touchdown. They had him out there. He just The wind is blowing from our right to left. And that ball was sailing with the wind. That's how close. That's Cunningham that he beat. It's a true freshman on the coverage. Half shot, a punt. Charles Frederick, another kid from right here in this area, takes it on the other end. Got about three yards on the return before he stumbles. And Washington, having come up empty last time, has good field position for their offense on their third drive, which is upcoming after this timeout. 6.20 left, first quarter. Great moments in Orange Bowl history. Wouldn't be complete without a guy that probably played more 
games at quarterback than anybody could imagine. There it's a fake handoff to Zonka that throws Mike Curtis and then get it to Warfield. <laughs> Paul Warfield, that'll be a touchdown. And then short yardage, you got to go to your tight end. Mandich across the middle, there touchdown. Is. How many games you play in this place, Bob? I don't know, but I played 13 years and it was nice coming back here. I hadn't been back here for a long time. And just walking out on the field have brought a lot of good memories. I said it last week, but it's like walking around with the mayor of Miami when you walk into the Orange Bowl with Bob Greasy. <laughs> hey, Bob! Hey, Bob! <laughs> that was nice. Thank you, guys. Washington from the 39-yard line. Here's a give to Hurst, and he has dropped by Vilma. Man, has Jonathan Vilma come to play. Loss of two. He's the middle linebacker, and he, we talked to him yesterday, and he doesn't weigh a lot. He weighs about 215, 220. Lands on gaining some weight, but uh, he's got the quickness that they look for in those linebackers at Miami. You mentioned Ray Lewis to him, and uh, you mentioned Webster, and some of those guys that have Mike, played before him. Michael Barrell. Barrell, yep. They were all... They all had speed, and then they grew into the position. He wants to be 10 pounds heavier by next year. He's pretty darn good right now. Empty backfield again for Pickett. On second down, Cody looking for a place to go and getting some heat. Flags are down. Might be a holding call. He gets the pass completed. And nope, they're going to say out of bounds anyway. Got it out to Todd Elstrom, but I think there was a holding with all that scrambling going on. So they'll back it up. This 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 holding happened behind, well behind the line of scrimmage. You've got to think if the coverage wasn't so good downfield, Pickett wouldn't have had to do all that extra scrambling around. He couldn't find anybody open. There you go. That looks that looks like holding. Mm -hmm. William Joseph with Nick Newton having a handful of Joseph's jersey. Bob, you mentioned what I think is a key to this weekend of college football, the word confidence the last time Washington had the ball. It's the one thing that Miami does not want the Huskies to gain. If you watch the Nebraska game, Colorado gained so much confidence that they continued. Oklahoma game 13-6, Oklahoma State had to have the confidence. Boston College had it in a tight ball game. You want to take it away from Washington right here. And Washington thought they had regained that edge last drive, but remember, they didn't get any points out of it. Now they find themselves in second and 22, and there goes Pickett down, courtesy Jerome McDougal. McDougal is the quickest of all of them. Here he is right here, McDougal. That's Backert, 72, trying to slide out to pick up the protection, and McDougal just says, I'm not having any of it. I'm going to ride around you. McDougal, whose brother played for Oklahoma, and then the Detroit Lions, Stocker was his brother. And that's his fourth sack now of the year. Miami came into the game with 30 sacks on the year. They've got to get all the way out to the 48-yard line for a first down. Pick it, and he's going to throw deep down the middle to his tight end. It was almost intercepted by Ed Reed. It hit him right between the two and the zero. And that would have been career interception number 20 for him. Here's Reed up here. The tight end's just going to go straight up the field. Oh, boy. That one, that one he should have had, and he knows it. Punting time for Washington. And as Bob said, the punter, a true freshman, has had his troubles this year. He's had five blocked. Derek McLaughlin, he's standing at his own five-yard line. He gets this one away. Not a great kick. Buchanan will have to let it bounce in front of him, though, and stay out of the way. It's going to be great field position anyway for Miami at the Canes 47-yard line. Miami leading 7-0 with 4.31 to go first quarter. Our Pacific Life game summary. The biggest play of the ball game came early. Opening drive, pick it back to throw, and found Jonathan Vilma, the middle linebacker for Miami. John took it back to the 13, two plays later. Clinton Porter, seven-yard touchdown. Miami led 7-0. The Huskies were threatening, and on fourth and goal, Pickett stepped on by his center, went down. Miami took over on downs. That was a critical play, because if Washington could have got on the board, 
They would have done a lot for their confidence. Time of possession not doing them any good. Down 7 nothing right now. Here's Portis, and Portis breaks into the open. Couldn't keep his balance, or who knows? He is so quick. He is patient, and then he is quick getting through the hole. He's running behind the right side of that line, Bibla and Gonzalez, and just jumps through the crack right there, and then the speed just can't keep his balance. 21 yards for Portis, and that means eight yards from 1,000. Washington jumped and got back. Dorsey comes up firing flags down. Deer makes the catch, but again, a penalty marker in the line of scrimmage. If they didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage, Larry Triplett's a defensive captain. Illegal procedure against Miami. Larry Coker, 9-0 in year one as a head coach. Not bad. And Larry Coker knows he's in a special situation. And he admitted that, hey, what I'm doing is nothing special. He says, there's a lot of guys that could have stepped into this situation and done the same thing. Well, I think that's being, that's being a bit... Uh, that's being too humble, Yeah, I think. that's being too humble. He, he was the player's choice. They wanted him, and they got him, and they got the good results. And again, the cadence draws Washington in. This is a free play for Dorsey. He goes complete inside the 35 to Shockey, his tight end. We saw Ken Dorsey do that, I think, three times last week against Syracuse. You know, he's done it a couple of times here early. It's a great weapon for a quarterback. It's not the first one. It's not the first weapon that a quarterback learns. But after you've learned some of the other things that you need to know, like reading and looking off and pocket awareness, if you can pick up that cadence and control the line of scrimmage, it's just another tool. We saw him at practice yesterday doing it pretty effectively with his own teammates just to kind of rehearse it. And he's well, helped it the, out to, tonight. That, that's for sure. You have to do it with your, your own teammates, mm -hmm. your own line, especially so they get to know how your cadence goes. That's one of the last things they did in their walkthrough yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you know, I used to try, and you try to pull your own guys off. Right. If you can do them, yeah. you can do anybody. Exactly. Second down and three. Jones in motion toward the ball. It's a give to Portis. And he's got a first down run, and he's got a 1,000-yard season. Becoming the fifth hurricane back to reach that plateau, and he's just getting warmed up here in the first quarter. For the offensive line, McKinney is 78. This is a little uh, sprint draw or a little draw action. Romberg is the center. Wilkins is in there for Haji Razuli. And when Portis comes out, there is no relief going in because the true freshman, Frank Gore, Frank Gore, who has just been outstanding. Well, our congratulations to Portis for a thousand yard campaign. There's a lot more football left. Now Jay Davenport, the single setback here. They play fake it to him, and Dorsey comes up slinging it. It's intercepted. Not a good throw off his back foot, and Owen Biddle, the safety, was back there to retrieve it. We're talking with Tim Hundley, the defensive coordinator. What are you going to do against uh, Dorsey? He said, well, we're going to need to put some pressure on him, disguise, give him some different looks, and hope that he makes some mistakes. I don't know whether which guy he was throwing this ball to. I think he sailed it over Shockey. At least that's what it looked yeah, like. It looked like to me like it was going to Shockey. He, he, there the pressure was. The pressure was coming from the outside, and he couldn't wait to take a look, and he just threw it. And so Washington takes over as they pick up a turnover, and they work from their own nine-yard line. Willie Hurst to the 10. That's it. It'll be second down and nine coming up. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Bud Light, the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Your Morgan Stanley financial advisor who will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. And Circuit City, we know how you feel, that's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew on a gorgeous 75-degree Miami night. And the Hurricanes lead by seven in the first quarter. Draw play, and that goes nowhere. Hurst is dumped by Wilford. 
Half fork will travel. And you bet Vince put a dent in a turkey the other day. <laughs> <laughs> this kid. He's going to be something, isn't he? Right here. He's a true freshman. Watch him as he's just going to run over. That's Zajac, the guard. <laughs> he rotates with those other two defensive tackles, and those other two tackles are pretty darn good. And this kid is really going to be special. Shades of Warren Sapp, who you and I were talking yeah. about. There's a lot of guys of that could be, but when we watched him after practice yesterday, yes. he kind of gives you a little bit of that. From the four now, here's a quick opener, and Hurst a nice run. And Willie Hurst gets out with a flag down, back out to the 14-yard line. Our referee's mic is not working, I don't think, Jack Kramer. They're going to call delay a game, so they whistle that one before it really got started. Negates a nice run by Hurst that would have gotten them some breathing room. And as Bob said, playing with that broken finger on the left hand, can't be easy to hold on to the ball. We saw him make a sensational catch on their first drive, and there's the numbers for Willie this year. The noise in that end zone, no doubt, will have an effect a little bit on Washington's offense. Right there is their outstanding receiver, the freshman. 19 plays for Washington, not one to their leading receiver. He's in tight against Buchanan down there. They'll keep it on the ground, though, and get out to about the 10, maybe the 11-yard line. Al Marshall made the stop. And now a little shoving going on after the play. I like our umpire. He's good sized. He got everybody out of the way there. Good job. <laughs> well, this is a critical situation right here. Was in the opening, we told you Washington has had five punts blocked. Miami has run back eight punts in the last two years for touchdowns. Remember, he kicked from about his own five last time, and they got a little bit of pressure on him. Now he's in his end zone. That's Derek McLaughlin we're talking about, the freshman kicker. And again. Not a long kick, and Buchanan's got a shot at it, but he has to dive forward to make the catch at the 41. So a 32-yard punt. Buchanan gets it to the 41-yard line. We go to Times Square Stadium in New York. Now we're going to wait and see about the flag. Brad? So we'll check in with John after we check the penalty. It is holding. They're going to have to. It's a tough situation. Do it here. again. Tough decision here because you got great field position. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Good call, partner. Yeah. They decline it. They'll take it right yeah. there. Larry says we're not going to do much better than the 41-yard line. I don't yeah. think. Yeah. Even if you are good at running punts back. Rick said that punt team. He said we have all kinds of coaches coaching it this week. <laughs> he says, we've had five punts blocked all year, and it's not because we haven't given it enough attention. So Miami sets up shop at the Husky 41 here in the final 36 seconds of the first quarter. They lead by a touchdown. Quarter seven-yard gallop earlier. Play action. Dorsey zips it outside. Nice catch. Andre Johnson. And he tipped those out of bounds right near the 30-yard line. Reminder at the conclusion of our game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Miami has been the beneficiary of great field position. Mm -hmm. Twice they've been inside the 50-yard line. Once they scored, this time they're on the drive. There it is. We'll take that any day. Oh, boy. Davenport, the fullback, is the single setback. Now Jay's going to get the call. And only got back to the line of scrimmage. Ty Ellis made the tackle. Davenport, one of the senior offensive captains, one of 14 seniors playing their final game on this field tonight. Najee in grad school already with a theater degree. And there's the guys, the seniors, and their numbers that ring the stadium. And the first quarter comes down to a close. So they will be moving into that wind you see on that flag as the second quarter 
is upon us. We played one. Seven nothing Miami the leader. ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Seven nothing Miami here as we start the second quarter. And the Hurricanes have it at the Huskies 30 yard line. Second down at 10. Beard in motion. It's a draw play. And, it's and he's in the open field and he's gone. Touchdown Miami. 30 yards for Portis. His second touchdown of the night. He's a road runner. This big offensive line. Probably one of the best in the country. Probably is the best in the country. Look at the speed now. He just he just sees the opening and just runs away from Biddle, the free safety. There was no angle to be had when he turned on the Jets. And Seaver's extra point is good. As is the case usually with the Canes, quick scoring drives. Their first one was two plays and 13 yards. This one was three plays and 41 yards. Bob, what I really like about Portis, where he runs, is not just his speed and his quick, but it's also the fact he is a smart runner. Every time he's run the ball tonight, we don't see a lack of patience. He waits for the hole to open up. Then when he sees it, then he hits a burst of speed. He's a very intelligent runner. Our Dodge drive summary, there's what I was talking about. 43 seconds, so they have two touchdown drives and still haven't had the ball a minute to get those two touchdowns. Well, that's because they started on the Washington 13-yard line for their first touchdown, and then they started on the 41-yard line going in after that short punt for that touchdown. So when you look at Miami's time of possession, it means very little. They are under 29 minutes a game as time of possession, but their average scoring drives between two and two and a half minutes. And who will they play? Well, they still got a lot of football left here, and then they go to Blacksburg next Saturday night, uh, Saturday afternoon, and we'll be there to bring you that one. But first things first, it's the Huskies on their menu right now, 14 to nothing, Miami. Rock Alexander and Charles Frederick are deep, and the ball fell the off. Ball fell off just before <laughs> Todd got there. That's pretty good. He almost pulled something there. <laughs> <laughs> That is like uh, the old Snoopy. <laughs> hey, okay. You guys running down field? What are you running down field for? We got to get Linus to hold that thing down there. Kicked it yet? So we'll try it again. He's laughing. <laughs> Miami has not allowed a point at home after the first quarter, and uh, we're seven seconds into the second quarter. Washington obviously hadn't scored yet, though they had one good-looking drive end at the six-yard line. That's how good Miami's defense has been on their home turf. This time, Todd gets all of it. Man, did he ever knock it out of the end zone again. Uh, is, is that, you know, we talk about how good Dorsey is in their offensive line and their receivers. It's nice to have good and their defense and about, yeah. yeah, but then they got the special teams with their kicker and their punter, and then the punt return guy, Buchanan, this team seems to have it all. Three kickoffs, three touchbacks. Next Saturday, we talked about it. Big East showdown, number two Miami and Virginia Tech in Blacksburg at 4.30 Eastern. One of the biggest college football rival rivalries is Oregon State and Oregon. Some of you will see Notre Dame and Purdue. And the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game is surprise, surprise, Colorado, Texas. Boy, was that a surprise. Oh, boy. Pick it. He completes it to his big tight end. Jeremy Stevens, and I mean big, 6'7", 260. Stevens has missed most of the season with a broken foot. Number 14, 6'7", about 265, does a little out and back in. Campbell, the linebacker, <laughs> trying to trying to cover it. And trying to bring him down. That's a load. It's like trying to tackle a tackle. He's only caught eight passes on the year coming in. He missed six of the ball games. They need him. They're trying to get another first down here. Here's a counter. Alexis trying to weave his way through Hurricane defenders, and he's going to lose a little bit. Well, those counters don't work well against Miami's style of defense, and that is 
their defense is across the line and upfield, and if you fake one way and go back, you're just giving them time to get into the backfield. The Budweiser.com airship flying over Miami tonight to provide our football fans with these spectac uh, spectacular aerial shots. This Bud's for you. That's a big Bud. That's a case and a half up there. And it's Washington thirsty for a first down. They empty the backfield on third and three. And there's a loose ball. Pickett picks it up. Has the presence of mind to do something with it and gets a first down. Could have been a disaster. Instead, he got it to Alexis. And it's a first down Washington. That's good presence of mind. That's exactly right, Brad. How often does that ever happen? He scrambled back into that pocket behind his center just to get this thing. Yeah, he just squirted out of his hands. Now, that ball could be slippery, could be wet, sweat could be dropping down on it. The receiver does a nice job of working back to the inside and making the catch. It was Kevin Ware, the tight end. Cody Pickett, one interception. That by Jonathan Vilma. Pickett to throw again. First down toss is not going to happen. Flags down to boot. He was sacked, and it's probably a holding call. Andrew Williams is there. So is Jamal Green. There's the other shocking score from today, as you see the holding call as well. Oklahoma beaten by Oklahoma State. Ohio State upset Michigan. Hit in West Virginia. Annual battle when they get together. And the other scores from around the country. It's another uh, surprise. Uh, Wash uh, uh, Illinois wins the Big, Big Ten. Ten. And for the first time in 55 years, they don't get to go to the Rose to the Bowl, Rose Bowl yeah. the Big Ten champion. So our congratulations to the Illini. Coach Turner's done a nice job there. At the 34-yard line, it's second down at 14. Still, they have not thrown a ball to their top receiver. And now they do, and he's got it. And he's just a little bit short of a first down, I think. There's Reggie Williams. He's a true freshman. A true freshman came in with 49 receptions. Beats the jam of Buchanan. This is an interesting matchup all uh, all game. How Reggie Williams, a true freshman and their leading receiver, does against these experienced corners in this defensive secondary for Miami. Most people feel that he'll end up becoming the best Washington high school product to ever wear a Husky uniform as a wide receiver as Pickett tries to get the first down on a quarterback sneak and may have gotten it. It was third down and less than a yard as they unpile bodies. But Williams is a local product to Tacoma, Washington. Interesting how Rick Neuheisel, one of the many coaches, of course, that were trying to recruit him, a highly talented wide receiver. And Rick flew him in on a plane, seaplane, a seaplane to land right in Rick's front yard out there on Lake Washington. That was a pretty impressive performance, I'm sure. And then Rick's wife had made fresh baked cookies. We told him <laughs> on the phone they must have been good cookies. Uh huh. <laughs> First down. Play action and pick it. Goes over the middle. It's intercepted by Campbell, the other linebacker. He's thrown two to the wrong color jerseys. Both are linebackers. I don't think he even saw Campbell. He was scrambling and looking downfield. Never even saw it. Chris Campbell's first interception of the year. And Vilma's first interception earlier. So the two linebackers. Here's Campbell right here. Watch him as he's going to drop back. Tries to throw to our left side. Now he comes back. And here he is right here. He's trying to get the ball to this receiver. Campbell picks it off. Never saw it. So they take over the great field position again. And they go for the quick strike here. They'll do an end around, a double reverse. Andre Johnson with his quarterback in front of him who got a block. And they get it down inside the 25-yard line. 13-yard double reverse. Now that is a true double reverse. Because it started off to the left, came back to the right, went back to the left, and then back again. It went back and forth so many times I got dizzy. That's Ethnic Sands, number seven. Going to give it to him. He gives it back to Johnson. Watch his block by Dorsey coming up. There. 
quarterback still in their bodies. Took out Josh Miller, the defensive end, too. He didn't pick on a little guy. At the 25 first down. Portis met in the hole after about a yard gain. And we check in Times Square Stadium in New York again. John Saunders, John. Brad, as we mentioned before, the Irish hoping to get to a bowl game, but they have to beat Stanford and Purdue. And here Julius Jones takes off 59 yards. Looks like he has a touchdown, but they get him marked down at the seven yard line. They can't get the touchdown, sets up for a field goal, and the Irish now lead by a touchdown. Brad. All right, John, thanks here. We've got 10.50 left in the half, and it's Miami by two touchdowns. Threatening again at the 24 yard line of the Huskies. Play action. Dorsey sets, fires, got his man. Jones out of bounds at the five. It's first and goal. 19-yard strike to Daryl Jones. Daryl Jones has been out a few games with different injuries, knee problems, foot problems. He's a true, he's a senior who'll be graduating. Daryl Jones is the leader of this wide receiver group. He is the slot receiver, just runs it down and out. The outside receiver clears. That's that's easy picking there. He hurt his ankle in that Florida State game we did, and then Beard took over his starting spot for a couple of games. But back to full speed, and with him, that's a lot of speed. First and goal at the five. Portis has already scored two touchdowns on the ground. They're going to throw a fade to the corner. Johnson hit him in the helmet. That was too easy. I don't know if Andre lost that baby in the lights or if he just lost his balance a little bit. Looked like he was going to score a touchdown. And I think it hit him right in the face, man. I know one thing for sure. He fooled Massey. Massey, <laughs> he didn't know where it was going. And I'm sure he didn't lose that one in the lights. But he will be more disappointed than anyone else because he is the hardest working receiver on this football team. Boy, is he ever. That happens. He did stumble just a little bit, and that took him off his stride, and it hit him right in the cage. You know, all the great ones drop balls all the good fumble footballs throw bad passes you know that all happens they just don't like to see it happen on national television Dorsey gonna throw back the other way and try to go on a swing pass to Portis out of the backfield it was low and incomplete and that will bring up third and goal now and Bob good receivers also have one other thing going for them when they drop a pass in the big ball game it's called selective amnesia <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's very important. That's very important. You got to be able to forget. You got to be able to remember quickly and forget quickly. Now Washington changes up its defensive grouping. It's third and goal at the five. Sands and Johnson out to the left and Jones in tight. The three wide receivers and now Jones will move toward the ball. Dorsey crossing pattern touchdown and it's Portis. That's his third of the night. Kenny Dorsey's 20th touchdown pass of the year. Sievers in for the point after. He's got it. It's the Clinton Portis night. Dorsey with a touchdown pass across the middle. Snuck him out of the backfield in that three wide receiver grouping. And a penalty marker on the extra points. Juan Gonzalez, one of the uh, offensive stars, uh, captain. Personal foul against the Huskies. And that means Miami's going to have a great place to kick off from. Doesn't change the touchdown. It has no effect on the game except the kickoff will be in Miami's favor. So is everything else right now. Back of the Orange Bowl in Miami, our Thanksgiving feast presented by Siemens. And right now Miami is munching on Washington. 21 to nothing with 10.23 to go in the second quarter. As Clinton Portis has scored twice on the ground, once on a pass moments ago from Ken Dorsey. And that's the scoring so far. Two turnovers. Those have turned into points. Three drives that started in Washington territory. Yeah. All three resulted in touchdowns. The longest drive they've had was the one we just saw, 38 yards. Yeah. 
Receivers will kick off from the 50 now because of that penalty on the extra point. And this one goes to the goal line. It's returnable. I don't know if it was a good choice. I don't think so. Not a good choice. They pooched it, which was a good idea because you could kick it out of the end zone easily. Sean Washington, Taylor. Washington should have said, just kick it out. We want it to go out. We'll get out to the 20. Charles Frederick, who is a local product here, number 10. He played high school ball in the same high school as Alexis. Maybe wanted to try to do something too much on his hometown turf. And Sean Taylor dropped him at about the four-yard line. Second time Washington's had to start inside its own 10. And you're down 21. You don't want that shadow of that goal post up your back. Alexis. Stops at about the line of scrimmage. Let's go back to the touchdown. Look what attracts attention from the defense. These two receivers out here and this guy in motion right here. But it's the back coming out of the backfield that's going to catch the touchdown. Everybody attracts attention, but it's Portis sneaking out of the backfield. Tight ends and backs inside the 10-yard line are great receivers down inside for Portis by the way that's his first touchdown catch of the year second down nine and Miami jumps in it appears looked like Santonio Thomas the defensive tackle fell into the neutral zone we'll wait and see as the officials clear it up Well, they're going to call legal procedure on Washington, so I take it back, Santonio. You weren't offside. You were drawn offside. And that'll take it halfway to the goal line. Our Aflac trivia question this week. Who was the last coach to go undefeated in his first season ever? We'll give you the answer a little bit later on. Second down and 11. Pickett in the end zone. And he got it complete out to Arnold. That's the second time Cody Pickett's bought himself some time and found a receiver out there. Let's check in with Swanee right now. Thank you. I'm with Dr. Donna Chalela, the president of Miami. Doctor, at Wisconsin, you foster the great environment for sports there. Miami, you have an outstanding program here. What's the relationship that sports has in the college community? Well, it has to be an integral part of the university. That's the most important thing. It's important that I know the coaches, that they have direct access to me, and that I pay attention to what happens to student athletes. They're students first, and the coaches know that I'm going to hold them to high standards. Uh, one more question. We'll take it after this play. Yeah, go ahead, Lynn. Doctor, a number of people thought when they were looking for a head coach here in Miami that you were going to hire Valerie Alvarez because you had a good relationship with him. What was the real story? Well, here's the real story. Obviously, we were looking for a coach. Barry indicated that he had some interest. Um, he talked to our athletic director. Our athletic director talked to Pat Richter. It wasn't to be. He didn't end up being a candidate for the job. Um, I think we picked an outstanding coach, and that Larry Coker has done a wonderful job for the University of Miami. And we have to agree with you. Thank you very much. There's the problems they've had with a punting team all year, and it just jumped up and bit them again. Kellen Winslow covers the putter McLaughlin in the end zone. It's a bad snap. Yep. He tried to go down and get it. He just couldn't handle it. Bad snap to a, a true freshman putter in the end zone on the road. Miami now has 23 points, and it all came from their defense and their special teams. Of course, the offense got it in, but they were all set up by defense and special teams. His daddy played pretty well on this field yep. a few years back, That's too. Right. <laughs> One of the great games ever in NFL history. Yeah. Well, he's going to be a good one as he's a little bit wide receiver and a little bit tight end, and so is Dad. And Kellen just got another two points for Miami. He's not getting an opportunity to play a lot on the offense because of all the wide receivers. But he's on the special teams, the kicking teams. They want athletes. That snap is low. Hart was the snapper.
And that's uh, two more points for Miami. 23 to nothing, Canes. They don't need any help. And when you help them, it just gets worse. McLaughlin will have the free kick coming up from the 20. When you start seeing all the upsets happening around the country that we've seen, like Michigan getting beat, Oklahoma today, Nebraska yesterday, when you look at Miami and we see Miami, you know, it's like Oklahoma last year. And Jice, uh, Jice, um, Heupel. Heupel. I mean, everybody gave their offense all the attention in the Heisman Trophy candidate, but it was their defense right. and their special teams that was the underbelly of that team. And the offense just didn't make any mistakes. And same here with Miami. Buchanan fields this on the bounce at the 25. He is dangerous. Phil Buchanan's got a little crease. Cuts back to the middle of the field. Buchanan still on his feet. Looking for blockers. Inside the 20 down to the 15. What a run back. Got a great knack of running the football. That might be your Mosi Tatupu winner right there. The he special is. team. 60 yard punt return. He's returned two punts for touchdowns already this year. He is second in the nation in punt returns. And he just has an easy step. He does his blockers do their thing and he reacts from that. I stand corrected. It's a kickoff return to the 15 yard line. Pat McGrath straightening me out over here. He'll keep you straight. Yeah, he will. First down at the 15. Gore in the backfield. Dorsey drops, throws. Touchdown! Davenport, 15 yards. for that cannon looks like we're in for another long night as Syracuse was last week Washington falling in line here it's about to be 30 to nothing and it is you go for the quick strike after the big play Kenny Dorsey with all kinds of time his senior fullback with the touchdown Go back to the touchdown, two wide receivers, three three defensive backs, but over here is the tight end, Shockey. Everybody wants to cover him, but it's the back that sneaks out of the backfield, Davenport, and runs the little swing route. Everybody wants to cover Shockey, caught two touchdown passes last week. Davenport, who was a running back right here in Miami, catches his second touchdown pass of the year. There's Najee. And isn't it something that last week it was two to the wide outs, two to the tight ends. Tonight it's two to the running back. Well, just spreading it around. Yep. I mean, that's a balanced offense. 15 of the plays of Miami's 19, as you saw, have come in Husky territory. That sure helps the cause. Alexander from the five on the kick return. And he's not going to make the 20. <laughs> Ken Dorsey now has thrown two more touchdown passes tonight, 21 for the season. The career, he just keeps adding to the mark as he passed Steve Walsh and Vinny and Gino Toretta and company. And he says, you know, what's more important maybe to me is how much those guys mean to me and that some of them are my friends. He said Steve yeah. Walsh especially yeah. has helped him and uh, yeah. said it means that much when you got guys like that that have been in the record books and then all of a sudden you find your name atop the list. And this kid realizes he's got it pretty good. He's yeah. got one of the best offensive lines. He's got great receivers, a great tight end, backs that can run the football, an offense, but he still works at it. He gets in there and he studies. He doesn't take anything for granted. Pick it. Going to loft it out to Hurst. Well, that almost could have been another interception, but Campbell had his sight set on taking Hurst down and didn't take the ricochet incomplete. Campbell's already intercepted one. Jonathan Vilma intercepted one. And this one was up for grabs, and he didn't quite know it. McDougal on the pass rush. Campbell playing his last game here in the Orange Bowl. And he's been, he's been all over the place. Senior out of Mount Pleasant, Texas. So 7.39 remaining in the second quarter. A 30 to nothing shutout right now. 
They had one good drive. This pass is tipped and it's intercepted. McDougal, the defensive end, and he's going to score. Touchdown, Miami. I'm sure the penalty is excessive celebration. I'm not sure Miami cares right now. Joseph got the tip that caused the interception. Remember, we've got three interceptions, none of them by a defensive back yet. Touchdown is good. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the scoring team. 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the try. There's the big fella. One defensive lineman bats it, the other one runs it in. I know they have that penalty in to create or to cut down on the excessive taunting and things like that, but McDougal deserves to show some excitement and express himself. How often does a defensive lineman pick off a pass, a deflection, and get into the end zone? I agree with you, Lynn. Especially on a dive like that. And you're diving that big body over the goal line, and you may never get another chance to do it. Extra point is good, and we get another look. This is supposed to be a screen pass. Tries to dump it out to the outside. Joseph knocks it. McDougal is aware of what's going on. This is the 23rd non-offensive touchdown in the last 22 games for Miami. <laughs> Watch now. Jerome head to Peter. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Uh, Larry Coker's team is up 37 to nothing. They score on offense, they score on defense, and they score with special teams. They're doing this on the number 11 team in the country. There's what Bob was talking about. Juan Gonzalez, and he's leading. The cheers down there. He is giving a speech. He's standing on the bench. The rest of the team is around him. You think that's not a fired up senior? He's a four year starter from right here in high school, right here in, in Miami. Went to Columbus High School. A lot of these Hurricane players are from South Florida. Gonzalez, a walk on, earned a scholarship. Could have gone to Ivy League schools scholastically. He's a character. He's a fun guy to be yeah, around. Yeah, he was. We talked to him during the week. Gonna bring the kick out. Alexander weaves his way across the 20. Ends up being a good run back. And Washington goes to work with a little better field possession uh, position than they've had the last couple of times. Our Aflac trivia question. Who was the last coach to go undefeated in his first season ever as a head coach? Gave you time to think about it. It's in this state. We'll give you that hint. Galen Hall. The Florida Gators in 84. And don't you know Steve Spurrier is watching this game tonight and knows what uh, happened to uh -huh. his old buddy Bob Stoops today. Uh -huh. Miami and Florida will probably be one and two in the BCS polls come Monday. And old oh man, still a lot of work to be done as Hurst breaks out. And Willie's still on his feet out across the 40 to about the 41 yard line, a 19 yard run. But if you start to think now, if Miami wins this and goes to Blacksburg to win, and if Florida beats Tennessee and then wins the SEC championship, what's that set up? It sets up a match, a rematch. <laughs> it would set up a rematch of the Sugar Bowl from last year, only it'd be for the big one. First down out at the 41 yard line. Pick it. He's been getting pressured all day. Runs out of there and got across the 45. Picked up about five on the scramble. Of course, Florida has two big games left at home next week against Tennessee. And then the, the SEC, SEC championship game against uh, either Auburn or LSU. Mm -hmm. Miami has to go next week to Virginia Tech. And that's no, that's that's not a gimme. Nope. They have lost five of the last six games to Virginia Tech. And the last three trips to Blacksburg has been losing trips for Miami. The backfield emptied again. Pickett throws complete. It's going to be short of a first down, though. It's out at about the 40, 
nine yard line but we were talking about the BCS as the weekend began or the Thanksgiving holiday began I guess we should say and Nebraska was alone on top but we know what happened to them at the hands of Colorado Miami in this one here obviously and Oklahoma State upset Oklahoma today so that's what we were talking about Texas is going to move up as well they beat Texas A&M there in the Big 12 championship Tennessee would like to be the East representative in the SEC if they could beat Florida Illinois won the Big Ten and on down the list it goes so you know Monday's going to be a pretty we, important we, day as we've been saying for weeks you got to play them. there's a lot of games left to be played at midfield third and two first he's got the first and Willie's down to the 46 yard line picked up five James Lewis and John Vilma made the tackle Willie Hurst one of the captains running hard Notre Dame still leading Stanford and we've got five minutes and five seconds remaining in our first half here sold out Orange Bowl in Miami and right now all Miami and again a quick opener and Hurst there's no quitting him flags fly near the end of the play yet back by the line of scrimmage flag came basically as the play was ending maybe yeah. he had trouble getting out of his pocket because that happened way before the flag came out and it's holding and it negates a nice run by Hurst a look down at a Orange Bowl, beautiful night, about 75 degrees at kickoff. And a full house for the Miami Hurricanes. University of Washington bringing out the best in the mm -hmm. Hurricane fans. Well, I guess. We welcome all of those of you that might be watching in cold weather, and we're sorry. It's really <laughs> nice out here tonight. <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of bad weather through the Midwest. Yeah. A lot of rainy games. Alexis back in there, tailback now. First and 18 after they walk off the penalty. Cody Pickett has some time this time and throws a strike. Nice pass. They got it to Williams. He picked up 17 of the 18 they needed to move the sticks again. So it's second down and about a yard. Number one, Williams is their leading receiver, as we mentioned. He's getting a lot of attention. Caught 11 passes for over 200 yards last week in their win against Washington State. He was the Pac-10 Player of the Week for those numbers. Career-high 203-yard day. They've thrown it at him twice. He's caught them both tonight. Now back to the ground they go, but they don't get the first down, I don't think. It'll be close. And maybe they gave him a good spot. They might have. Alexis was the ball care uh, ball carrier DJ Williams brought him down and let's see where they put it finally he got his foot right on that marker oh, I'm starting to think maybe he didn't get it now I'll go back to my original thought Pickett is um, 9 of 16 for 89 yards with the three interceptions this Miami defense is tough on opposing quarterbacks. He's short. Yep. Opposing quarterbacks for the University of Miami defense have only completed 45% of their passes. Five touchdown passes and 20 interceptions against this defense. What a ratio that is. So it's still not quite a yard short, more like a foot. And third down coming up. Two tight end set. And Hurst the tailback. He gets the call. Boy, he had to fight, but he broke free and he got the first down. Lewis finally stopped him. He ran into Chris Campbell and kept on going. And no quitting Willie Hurst, even though his team's down 37 to nothing. Well, this is a tough kid right here. Gets hit in the backfield and just keeps going. Guys, I talked to John Pettis, who's a graduate assistant here. Actually, he was the offensive coordinator at Arizona State. He coaches a wide receiver. He says, the one thing we haven't done enough, throw the ball deep to Williams once we get close to the end zone. Take he, advantage of his height. He's in the slot to the left right now, and Pickett goes back across the middle to his tight end, and it's broken up. You can't throw it any better than that. Stevens had his hands on it, but Lewis 
The safety got over there and popped it out. We mentioned Stevens missed a lot of games, six games. Came in with eight receptions. You can't throw this with a handle on it. Campbell had good coverage on the drop from linebacker, and then Lewis came over there. And Lewis, I don't know if he pulled something making that play. He comes out limping. And they have Fitzgerald back in there in the secondary now. Second down and 10. This is the 10th play of the Washington Drive. Pickett. And again, trying to go across the middle to a tight end. This time, Ware, and Ware can't hold it. Where on the right side of your screen, Pickett gets a nice alley to look through. Just having to, everybody's dropping the balls on him. That's three drops. Gonna need some help. Miami's been scoring quickly. Washington had a long drive and didn't get it in. Now they've got third and ten. And Will Fork comes across and lets the lineman have it and everybody's pointing fingers. I think the umpire says this one is going against Washington. Why did it stop? False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. So Still Vince third Wolfork down. got his shot in and five yards going the other way. There's Will Fork right there, number 75. Yep. Yep. Zajac moved just a little bit. Bob and Brad, Miami doesn't give away injury information to us on the sideline, but James Bowles got to the sideline and working on his left knee, and he was in severe pain. All right, Swanee, thanks. We'll keep a lookout on that. He's a good one back there in the secondary. They'll miss him. Pickett scrambles. Now some green in front of him. Got to get by Buchanan, though, and he can't. Buchanan holds his ground and makes the stop. And it's fourth down. You know, at the beginning of the year, Buchanan was like the third or fourth guy that anybody talked about in that Miami secondary. They'd talk about Reed and Lewis and Rumpf. And now that's the first thing out of anybody's mouth is the play of this kid, Philip Buchanan. They're going to try a long kick. Pick it to hold John Anderson to try a 52-yard field goal. And the kick on the way. And it hit the upright and goes off to the right. He had enough leg on it. And that's the kind of night it's been so far for the Huskies, I guess. He's another one of those kids from Pope John Paul up in Boca Raton. Thought he had it. Missed it by that much. Still 37-0. Looking in on the Orange Bowl, our Pacific Life game summary. All the mistakes have led to touchdowns. Pickett's three interceptions, one directly by McDougal into the end zone. The other one's led to Portis scores. Kenny Dorsey hasn't had to work too much. Thrown 11 passes, two of them touchdowns. Clinton Portis has scored three times, twice on the ground, once on a reception from Dorsey, and has gone over the 1,000-yard mark for the season. All in all, Miami, their time of possession, get a load of this. Five minutes and 44 seconds, and they lead 37-0. Well, it's been that kind of day. Turnovers, and then the special teams, the kicking game of Washington. Bad snap in the end zone gave him a safety. And then a 60-yard free kick return by Buchanan set up shop for a touchdown. At the 35, first down. And here comes Gore. Gore, the freshman, out across midfield, down to the 49-yard line. Now you take out Portis, you put this guy in, he rumbles for 16 yards. Yep. He's a true freshman. Portis is just a junior. The good news for a lot of their opponents next year is they do lose three huge offensive linemen. <laughs> and they'll all be playing in the National Football League. Yes, they will. First down at the 49. And Dorsey working from the gun for the first time tonight. Ken throws. That's kind of a rarity. Shockey had it go through his hands incomplete. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dodge. You can take it as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Prudential Financial, a rock solid leader in financial services. Prudential Financial to help you grow and protect your wealth. 
and Beechwood aged Budweiser with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the King of Beers. Second down and 10. Here's a little counter. Portis back in there, wraps both arms around the football and pulls his way near the 42-yard line. I mentioned, excuse me, Brad, I mentioned this is a balanced offensive attack for Miami. You think with all the passes that they do and all the stuff upstairs, but offensively running the ball, they're 19th in the nation, passing their 32nd. Yep. So get more production out of the running game. 210 yards a game they average on the ground. Dorsey set to go to the air. Waits and fires down the middle for Shockey incomplete. And Dorsey would like to have another shot at that one, I think. Well, he stood in the pocket a long time, and the good thing that he did, he threw it to an open area between defensive defenders. And Shockey just didn't get in, the, in between the defenders. So Capshaw's going to have to punt on a fourth down with a minute 17 left. This is his first punt? Second punt. Second time. And Charles Frederick. <laughs> Back at the 10-yard line. Wow. Mile in the, ball. In the ball. air. And hung it up for his guys to cover. They didn't need to. He dropped it out of bounds at about the 5-yard line. Nice punt. Reminder, coming up on Monday night. Should be a heck of a battle. Tampa Bay will take on the high-powered St. Louis Rams, team that sits atop their division. Bucks and Rams, Monday Night Football on ABC, 9 o'clock Eastern. Talk about a track meet. Yeah. Play the Rams. You're getting a track meet real quick. You're not kidding. There's what they do. 31 a game, a lot of yards passing, and then you get to watch Marshall Falk. He's one guy I could watch every week play. Boy, isn't that the truth? He gets my vote. MVP of that league. He is good. Here's a draw play. And Alexis has some room to run and then runs over James Lewis, who did make the tackle, and they pat each other <laughs> on the backside. Good hit. Coming up in about a minute, Capital One Halftime Show. John and Terry will be along from Times Square Stadium to bring you the memorable moments from this year in college football, plus the scores and highlights from this kind of wacky Thanksgiving weekend that we've had in college football. Pickett pump fakes, now wants to go to Williams. He hung it up there, and he caught it. And I thought Ed Reed was going to pick that off, but Pickett put a lot on it and a 16-yard pickup. That was impressive. That young man right there is going to be around for a long time. Made some impressive plays here tonight. Three catches now for Reggie Williams. And a first down. 43 seconds left. Pickett back. He's in trouble. They drag him down. It won't be a sack. He got a couple of yards on the scramble. Andrew Williams made the stop. And now timeout taken with 36 seconds left in the half as the Huskies will talk it over on the sideline. We'll take a timeout with them. They trail 37 to nothing. The last game of the half. I'd say it's a hurricane warning. 96 to nothing they outscore the opposition. Including 59 to nothing against Syracuse in the game we had for you last week and now 37 0 here. Washington would like to get something on the board before halftime. Pick it in trouble and down he goes again and the ball is loose. Picked up by Miami. It's Joseph. I don't know if they blew it dead or not. Joseph scooped it up. Caused the fumble. Picked up the fumble. But is it a fumble or just a sack? Let's see. It's definitely a fumble. And I think it's going to be Miami's ball. And let's let Jack Kramer sort this out for us. Timeout taken by Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, I hope your mic works for this one. That ball was loose. It sure looked like it to me, but the ball just, uh, the line of scrimmage is just set back at the 27 as though it was just a sack. They're explaining it to the Miami sideline. Greg Mark, the um, defensive line coach, Randy Shannon, the coordinator. 
gets a lot of credit for this Miami defense. We showed you they haven't let any score in the last six quarters. Not only that, but they've shut three teams out this year, and only two teams have scored more than seven points against this Hurricane defense. There's a guy that doesn't start at tackle but plays more than the two guys that do. Will Fork who had a big play earlier. We talked about him. If we get any official announcement, he'd be the one to make it. You can see both coaches are wondering. We're obviously wondering. It's third down and long coming up. We got a chance to take another look at the play. The pocket collapsed on Pickett in a hurry. That's Joseph 94. The ball, the is, ball out. is out at that point. The ball is loose. That's uh, Zajac. He doesn't get it. And Joseph, Joseph does. It. Yeah. So now, oh, Stevens leveling Fitzgerald. Marquise Fitzgerald. Reset the game clock. Nine seconds. Nine seconds. Well, I'm sorry. I don't understand. I'd well, love to tell you, folks, there's seven seconds left. The ball is not Miami's because their defense is still on the field. The, the only thing that could have happened was... A whistle, maybe. The, when he was in the grasp, of the quarterback was in the grasp before he fumbled it, they could have blown the whistle. That's got to be the case, and but, we have gotten no explanation, so we may not. Now they have to reset the clock. It's run its half out, and they have to put nine seconds back up there. John and Terry, Capital One Halftime Show coming up. Some of the great moments from the season. Some of the great moments from the last two days. And some shocking moments and developments from this day again. That ball was out as soon as he was hit. So that's it. The two sidelines were told we weren't. Yeah, but that ball, I saw another replay up here. That ball was out as soon as the quarterback was hit. Guys, the official called him down. And that's what they're sticking with. <laughs> that's their story, and they're sticking to it. Right. Last play of the half, Pickett throws behind Williams. Actually, there will be one more play. Four seconds left. Cody lost his hat. Will Fork, I think, is the guy that helped him lose it. Been a tough hat for the quarterback. Sophomore out of Caldwell, Idaho. And was we opened up the game tonight. Bob said it's going to be some things that are going to rattle him, including yeah. the noise in here and the yeah. defense he's playing against. And that has all come to pass in the first half. He's having a tougher night here in the Orange Bowl than Ken Dorsey had in Husky Stadium yep. last year. You're right. But so we look down on a timeout. Reminder: tomorrow the Skins game continues, 3:30 Eastern, 12:30 Pacific. Woods. Hardovic and Norman and Montgomery, they all battle it out. Final round of a terrific Thanksgiving weekend How'd they do classic. Today? Um, there we go. No skins? You're kidding. It all gets it's a, it's a push this year, right? You gotta win two two in a row, don't you? Two yeah, holes you gotta, in a row to or, or you gotta, if, if you win a skin, then you gotta validate it on the next hole. So a million bucks at stake tomorrow, and 20% of the winnings of that million dollar purse will go to the September 11th telethon fund for the victims of the New York disaster. So those four guys will have at it tomorrow. And here on this beautiful Thanksgiving Saturday night in Miami with the palm trees blowing and old glory doing likewise. we got four seconds left in the first half and Miami has dominated from the get go. It all started with Vilma's interception on the opening drive yep. for Washington, and the Canes haven't looked back on offense, defense, or special teams since. <laughs> Barring a penalty, here's the final play of the half. And it's on the ground to Hurst, who's had a good first half, really played hard, and the half comes to a close. All Miami. Rick Neuheisel has walked into a buzzsaw. John Saunders and Terry Biden will be at Times Square Stadium in New York on the Capital One Halftime Show right after this. The Orange Bowl in Miami where our Thanksgiving feast presented by Siemens about to come to a close over this weekend. All Miami. 37 to nothing is the halftime score. We welcome you back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. 
And Bob, you know, uh, talk about Thanksgiving feasts. I mean, they're treating them like third day leftovers. Eat them more one more time and then kick them out of the stadium here. That's what Miami's doing to Washington. Hey, so Washington's far. had the ball 23 minutes in the first half. Miami's had, only had it seven minutes. But the heck with that. Miami's <laughs> had 23 plays. They've only, done it every only five in their own territory. Every way you could do it. Portis running, Dorsey throwing. The defense came up with the first big play of the game, and that was Vilma's interception. That turned into points. McDougal's interception turned into immediate points as the big fella splashed down in the end zone. The end zone's where the special teams of Miami came up. Bad snap. Kellen Winslow comes up with a safety, sacking the punter. And then, as we've seen him do so many times, Philip McCannon on the ensuing free kick, 60 yards to set up another score. Miami starting from the Washington 46-yard line on the average. I mean, that is just unbelievable. Turnovers, punt blocks, punt returns, everything going Miami way. 21 points off those turnovers. Let's check in with Swanee. Well, Bob and Brad, Greg Nohizo is honest and he is realistic. He told his team there's no way that we expected this to be the situation coming into halftime. But what we have to do is go out and play with character. How they play the second half, he says, is going to reflect very much on who they are. His last statement to me was, we are the Washington Huskies. We will play with pride. Brad? I'm sure they will. And they've got guys out there that no doubt are not going to quit because they've got seniors out there on that team that are thinking about the bowl game as the next contest upcoming, but they didn't want to have this happen to them on the road. Let's take a look at our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. Cody Pickett, three interceptions in that first half. And look at the time of possession, 23-10. That means 6.50 for Miami. And I don't think I've ever seen a half where a team had it less than seven minutes and had 37 points. But again, as Bob said, when you start in 18 of your 23 plays on the Huskies' end of the field, it's helping you. And some of these offensive players from Miami are complaining a little bit because they didn't get <laughs> enough time. Their stats. Uh... Well, here come some stats. Portis got about 11 yards. He doesn't want to go down. No, he doesn't. Portis had 69 yards rushing on seven carries in the first half. And in that first half, it came the fifth Miami running back to hit the 1,000 yard in a season plateau. There's the other guys. Had a few good ones around here. Edgerin did it twice. And they say that the guy that is behind Portis, Frank Gore, is capable of being Edger Edgerton James type of running back before he's done. And Otis Anderson is the all-time leader in yardage. Here's a quick slant to Jones. Puts the brakes on and wheels. And he's down to the 45-yard line. I think he's back and healthy. Back and healthy. He's got some speed. He's he won the 100 in the uh, Big East the last couple of years. Madavi catches him from behind. I gotta believe that he wasn't up to speed yet. Well, there's makes where he makes turn. the turn. Madavi was already closing. The linebacker. By that time. The linebacker got him. 23-yard pickup for Daryl, one of those seniors laying out here on the home field for the last time. First down at the 45. Dorsey, quick drop, throws out Ethnic Sands. Sands down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds by Alexander. Daryl Jones is the only one of the top five receivers that Miami will lose. The other four are back, as is Dorsey. All of the running backs except Davenport, but the two tailbacks are back. Portis, McGahee, and Gore. And uh, <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be loaded again next year, I guess say. is what I'm getting to. Here's the give. Portis, Portis breaks into the secondary again inside the 20. Davis and Tuyasa Sopo make the stop. But not before Clinton tacks on a few more. Take a look from behind the offense, that offensive line, Romberg and Bibla on the right side. The thing for Miami, the Hurricanes, offensively, they want to come out and establish two or three good offensive drives to carry them into next week. I mean, they've, they've got this game won, basically. Now they got to start getting their momentum, keep it going for Virginia Tech next week. 
Here's Portis, changing directions, gets a first down, stays on his feet, he's inside the 10. Here's what the plays have done so far to start this third quarter. 12 yards, 23 yards, 19 yards, 9 yards, and 10 yards right there. And, and Washington knows the outcome of this game. Defensively, I mean, they know that, that they can't compete on the, the same field with the Hurricanes. It showed the first half. So, you know, it's like Neuheisel said going, coming out of the halftime. We got to play with pride. And, and if they're not playing, I'm sure he's going to get some other guys in there. First and goal now for the Canes at the Washington nine. Here's Portis already with three touchdowns. Oh, and he lost the ball at the end of that one. And Washington says they have it. Let's see. They might have blown it dead. Still no signal from the official. Well, no signal means it's that Miami's ball. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to be at the two-yard line. So Clinton did a cartwheel down there and it ended up. I think the ball came out when he hit the ground. Well, we'll take a look. It was a good look at it. And... Yep. Yeah. His shoulder and the his, ball was. Yeah. His forearm and ball was on the ground and then it came out. He's got 100 yards rushing now. Davenport on the carry. That's just some sugar for the fullback. You right bet. There. He already caught a touchdown pass yeah. in the first half. Davenport, the fullback, ex, ex running back that we talked about, moved over to fullback the last couple of years, does all the, the heavy hitting, the blocking, some receiving. When they get down near the goal line, they give him a touchdown every now and then. <laughs> Give some love. A little bit of sugar. It's at the two-yard line. Third down and goal. Did Dorsey go play action here? Nope. Down the board. Oh, what a collision. Did you hear that? I don't think he made it. Madavi and Davenport, I think, are the... I think it was Madavi's helmet and Davenport that collided. You can hear it up here. And... I thought Larry said, let's go for it. He is. You know, the, the bottom line is it would be a tough angle to kick a field goal because they're on the hash mark and they're on, the, like, the half-yard line. To, get, to kick that ball between there would be a tough angle. Portis is coming back in. It's fourth and goal. As Bob said, it's at about the one-foot line. And Dorsey's going to call timeout. Yeah. Wasn't quite sure if he had the right personnel in there or whatever. They don't want to waste an opportunity to put up seven more, but they lead by 37. Ten thirty-two to go in the third quarter, and Miami, on the opening drive of this quarter, has marched it all the way down to the one-foot line, where it is fourth down. And they've decided they are going for it here. If they don't make it, if they don't make it, Washington will take over on their own half yard line. So Miami defensively can come back out and stuff it. They put Carey in that backfield. Airborne is Davenport. And he's in. Touchdown. Second, second effort. Didn't make it the first time, but good second effort by Davenport. Madavi met him again in the hole, but this time Najee had enough head of steam to get it in. Watch the uh, watch the meeting right over the top, right there. Oh, man. Madavi and Davenport, fullback to fullback. That was the collision on the previous play, and Madavi won that one. Najee wins it the second time, you a one-yard touchdown. With a number like 41, Madavi, he's got to be the fullback. <laughs> he knew where he was going. In college. Larry Coker's team now up 44 to nothing. We talked about whether or not it's difficult for him to get his team up every week. It doesn't look like it was a problem tonight, but this is his response. Well, I think it is hard every week. I've heard some great coaches say it's three times a year is all you can really have a great offensive game. I think that's why some people t say special teams and defense are the key for the consistency, but I don't really believe that. I think you can play well offensively every week. I don't think you can play a great game every week, but, and I think that the, the games trans uh, transform in different uh, fashions, and I think, uh, you know, again, I think it's, it's hard to do every week, and that's why there are not many undefeated teams in the country. And, you know, I don't think they have, offensively, they've played great tonight. They've played well. They haven't had to, really. They've taken advantage of their opportunities that were presented by their defense and special teams. 
Last week, remember, they averaged just under 10 yards a play against Syracuse. And we told you the gobbles and chunks they were taken out on this 80 yard march in nine plays by far the longest drive both in distance and in time four and a half minutes and they get the one yard touchdown by Davenport 44 to nothing Miami Seavers kick going to float down to Rock Alexander at about the eight yard line Alexander found himself an opening he's in the open field a kicker to beat. Rock Alexander taking it down inside the 40. Buchanan's going to track him down at about the 25-yard line. Buchanan again. He's special on special teams no matter what he's doing, but it was a 67-yard kick return. He scores him and he stops him. Rock Buchanan, who has returned, he's returned a kickoff 95 yards earlier in the season and also a fumble recovery for a touchdown against Michigan in the first game. They've got the right guy with the ball, but Buchanan says, uh-uh, not on us. Boy, Buchanan had to run a long ways to track him down, and now he sets up shop at his cornerback position up to the top of your screen. Pick it. Might want to go that way. Wide open is Arnold at the 17, puts a move on, and he's down to the five-yard line. So this is the second time Washington's been down inside the five. Last time they came away without any points. Good pr protection, first down pass. Arnold right, open right in front of Reed. You know, the best time to throw any time is on first down because of the threat of the runner run or the pass. That was a 30-yard pickup, first and goal at the five. Alexis is the tailback. Pick it, comes up throwing, tipped, incomplete. And Rick Neuheisel said, throw it over the top. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, we told you earlier, Miami hasn't allowed a point after the first quarter at home this year. They still haven't, but now Washington's got it again at the five-yard line. And one touchdown in the last 19 quarters. Well, we've seen them 96 to nothing over the last week and a half so yeah. far. Pick it. Alexis straight ahead touchdown and the local kid goes in from five yards out Miami came in averaging eight points a game overall they led the nation in scoring defense averaging eight points and so they'd like to keep it that way already had three shutouts this year this won't be a shutout now as Alexis scores and Anderson in for the point after. But there's the pride that Rick Neuheisel talked to Swanee about coming out the second half. Anderson's extra point is good. So that guy from Boca Raton High School, John Paul II High School, scored it. And then the kicker, same school, hits the extra point. So the uh, Florida connection for the Huskies gets the first seven. And Rick's not done coaching. Well, they're they're moving on. Uh, they're going to Holiday Bowl. There's the guys we're talking about. All three of them: Charles uh -huh. Frederick, who is uh, run back kicks and uh, punch tonight; Anderson, the kicker; and Alexis, the tailback. So good for them. Two of the guys have come through so far. I was talking to uh, Anderson, the kicker. I said, "How how did you get from Boca Raton, Florida, to Seattle, Washington, University <laughs> of Washington?" I said, "Well, he said uh, Miami had just signed a kicker. Florida had a good kicker." And uh, Florida State had a good kicker when I was a senior, and said I just did it. Says it looked like a good place to go. He says I'm says I haven't questioned my decision yet. Go 3,000 miles away from home. And I said, well, what about mom and daddy? He says they, they don't, it's a long way for them to go. <laughs> he says kidding. he says they make every game. Uh huh. That's every something. Game. One of the Hurricane fans uh, outside our booth said to me at halftime, if Miami's number one and Florida's number two in the BCS and it stays that way, i got to travel an awful long ways to watch a football game for the national championship. I said, boy, do you ever. Gore can't handle the kick, goes out of the end zone, touchback. We talked about the trip. It is the farthest in the continental United States from campus to campus you can go. Seattle to Miami, 3,033 miles. So. 
Unless you're in Miami, you're going to go play in the Great Alaska Shootout. That's about as far as you yeah. can go. And these two teams first got together in 91 when they shared a national championship. Then they got together in 94 when Washington broke the 58-game winning streak here in the Orange Bowl. And then again last year when Miami went up to the Huskies, and uh, that's the only game they've lost in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Riding the nation's longest winning streak at 19, soon to be 20. This is Frank Gore. Got about a yard. Kai Ellis made the stop looking back last year. We did that game out in Seattle. It was Marcus Tuyasisopo. He had himself quite a ball game, hooking up there with his big tight end. That was a huge touchdown. Miami did rally. Ken Dorsey going for the score, but uh, in the end, it was the Huskies 34 to 29. That's the only blemish in the last two years on these guys in green and orange. Here's Gore, little counter, broke one tackle. Snaps out there over the 25 yard, and he almost got a first down out of that. Eight for Gore. Portis, by the way, and I mentioned it, I don't know if he'll play again tonight, but he's over 100. And Gore, remember, after Portis got his 130-something last week, came in and outrushed him against Syracuse. Yes, a couple long runs. They keep making each other better, those two guys. Boy, that's the way to have it, too. You got, you got depth, and you have competition, a little friendly competition going both ways. Clinton's uh, closing in on Edger and James' school record of 100-yard games, seven this year, and you saw 13 for a career. Now Gore, and he'll have a lot of 100-yard games before he's done playing ball here. And got himself a first down, but we got a flag on the play. Miami might have had a couple of guys come out of their stances, I think. A little bit of movement. And that'll take the first down away. Fire and snap. Snap infraction against the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Bob and Brad. One, one of the things I find very interesting about Larry Coker and his style is he views a football game not as one game but in halves. And he said Miami has only lost two halves of football going back to the Washington game last year and the first half of the Boston College. Well, that is absolutely phenomenal when you think about it. They have only lost in terms of scoring in two halves of football. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, we sure haven't seen them lose too many halves this year, I'll tell you that we much. We did uh, their Penn State game, the first game of the year. That's when Penn State was not playing, certainly like they're playing right now. Right. Penn State came back today to beat Michigan State. If you didn't hear or didn't see it. And then Joe Paterno, they started out, what, 0-4 or 0-5 or something? If they win next week, they'd be bowl eligible. That's amazing. There's a strike thrown to Daryl Jones, who's becoming a part of the offense again tonight. Pick up a 13. Daryl Jones, a fifth-year senior, running a little slant from the top of your screen. The thing I like, the ball is on him. When he breaks and it's right there where he can catch it, do something with it. That baby was on the way yeah. before he cut inside. And that's the way they work in practice. They want to get the ball there as soon as he breaks so he can. That's the time when you're going to be open the most, if you're ever open, is right when you break the, make the break on the uh, slant. And some confusion on the substitution. Dorsey's not happy, has to use his second time out of this half. 7.55 remaining, third quarter. Great Orange Bowl stadium history moments. The last national championship Miami won was the beginning of 92, January after the 91 season. They won it right here. Actually ended up sharing that national title with Washington. Dennis Erickson's team uh, shut out winner over Nebraska. As that year, Miami won the AP poll and Washington won the coaches poll. Mm -hmm. But there's the four and they want one more black dot over there that says, uh, 01. That's what they're hoping for. And they're well on their way tonight. So Virginia Tech is the only team that's standing in their way from at least getting to that game. Dorsey fires. Johnson with a catch. He's out of bounds. But he made the grab at about the 30. In front of Chris Massey. Pick up a 32. Andre Johnson 
does a nice job because he knows the ball's not in the air. It takes a long time. And he knows his quarterback, so he's looking back to see if it's underthrown, and it is. Steps out of bounds right there, but he did a nice job of looking back and stopping coming back for the ball. Out of the 30-yard line. Three wide out, Sands joins the group. He's in a slot, and it's Dorsey from the shotgun. Portis flanking him. Dorsey loads and fires deep middle, incomplete. Johnson, the intended receiver. And we head to Times Square Stadium in New York for an update. Here's John Saunders. Brad, here on the Burger King update, the Georgia against Georgia Tech, David Green looking for Fred Gibson. The first fake, and then fires it down with the wrist. 50-yard game. It sets up a touchdown from Veron Haynes from three plays later. They go for the two-point conversion. Don't get it. Georgia leads 21 to 17. Those games always tight battles going down to the wire and sometimes overtime in the flats tonight at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Good game going there. Four to stop for no game by Larry Triplett. Porter says to Bibla, I'm, I'm sorry I was going the other way. <laughs> Those guys up front, and I know we give them credit. I don't know if there's enough credit you can give that group. Let me, let me just say one thing. Miami has only been sacked. Dorsey's only been sacked twice this year. This is the 10th game for the University of Miami. And the number of passes they've thrown. Ron, Ron Burke, the center, one of the guys we're talking about, comes out a little bit shaken up, and uh, Joel Rodriguez will take his spot. I think he hurt his thumb, maybe. Yeah. And you got to have your thumb to snap the football. Well, he's injured that thumb before, and he's had it uh, taped, as you can see. But uh, when you talk about lack of sacks by a quarterback, uh, you, you first of all look to the offensive line and also some to the quarterback. Yep. In 292 pass attempts. High snap with a new center. Dorsey pulled it down. Sands pulled in the pass. And all in all, a pickup of about two or three on the pass play. It's a nice job by Dorsey to, to knock the snap back to himself. Watch him. Reaches up. Whoops. No, no sweat. I've been this before. Rock and Alexander was blitzing from the outside. It's going to set up a field goal attempt of 45 yards. Receivers, we saw him hit from 48 last week. Is that going to drift in there for him? Not quite. Just missed it a little bit to the right. Somewhat like last week, the only thing Miami really did wrong was miss one field goal, yeah. and that's about all they've done wrong tonight again. So the score remains 44-7. Seventy eight thousand one hundred fourteen in the sellout crowd tonight. Beautiful night. Oh man is it ever just gorgeous. And there's a great look. This this Orange Bowl you talk about championship games. Uh, they've had some Orange Bowl games here that would end up in championship games. They played Super Bowl games here. This is a grand old stadium. Here's Alexis who scored Washington's touchdown. And he's out to about the 32-yard line. Let's check in with Swanick. Thank you, Brad. I'm with Barbara Hedges, who's the athletic director at the University, University of Washington. Barbara, you know, I hated it when you left USC in 1991 to go up to Washington, but I was so happy for you. This program spent over $100 million recently. Will you continue to grow? Absolutely. We've completed the renovation of our basketball arena. We've built an indoor practice facility. We're building a basketball, a baseball and soccer stadium, and a new academic center. You've got a great program. What does it take today to have a successful collegiate program? Well, you certainly have to keep up your facilities, obviously, and that's what we're doing at Washington. And you have to recruit very well and have an outstanding program, and that's what we're trying to do. Well, continued success to you. Thank you. Barbara, thank you very much. Brad? Thanks, Barbara and Swally. Third down and five. I understand she spends a little time on the golf course, too. Uh-huh. I think she played this morning, didn't she? Uh, I think she canceled. She canceled. <laughs> Her group played, but I, she was... She, uh, she had things to do. Yeah. Third and five, and here's the completion. 
Patrick Reddick. And he's got a first down. Pick up a 12 on a third and five. So again, the Huskies not quitting, trying to work it down the field here with five minutes left in the third quarter. Take a look down on the Hurricanes and the Huskies from Budweiser.com Airship. Proud to provide you with the live shots a thousand feet above the Orange Bowl. That's a good spot to watch the game from. If you can't see the plays develop from up there, you don't know football. It look like ants from that. From well, that now side. look at it. it's getting closer it's though. Getting better. Now I can see it coming. It's a pass. It's incomplete. <laughs> 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 McDougal got some nice pressure yeah. on Pickett. Spent a lot of days in this old place playing ball, I tell you. The wind always blew. Always I said wind. that to you coming in today. Our ties were flying out of our sport coats. I said, man, did you always have to throw in this stuff? Yeah, always had wind. Always had wind. You know, Miami won. This is, they, they won their first national championship in this stadium against Nebraska in the Orange Bowl game. Howard Schnellberg. Mm -hmm. One of the four. Yep. That one was in 83. Pick it. In trouble. Oh, boy, the ball is loose. It's covered by Washington. Could have been a worse disaster than it already was. It was Joseph that knocked the ball loose. That's his fourth forced fumble of the season. You know, you talk about this Miami team. There's these two defensive tackles. Joseph, 94, right there, just splits the two offensive linemen. Ben, the center, is right there to recover. His fourth force fumble, and we think he had five, but they didn't call it yes, earlier in the ball game. Remember good that? Good point. Good point. So now it's third down and a couple of miles. Third and thirty. There aren't a bunch of plays in the playbook for this one, and the ball is loose again. And this time Miami does have it. McDougal. McDougal, who's got an interception, now has a fumble recovery. Well, they came in leading the nation in turnover margin and also leading the nation in takeaways. He never handled a snap. And how alert McDougal is to get on the football. What is that, four turnovers today? Wow. So all Miami and about to maybe be more Miami. They lead 44 to 7. Best show on television coming up Tuesday. New partner there for Sipowitz. Hey, my man Sipowitz. You got a new partner. He, he got a lot of new partners. They've been, <laughs> been running them in and out of there the last few years. If you huh? had to work with him, you wouldn't be a partner for him for <laughs> oh, long he's either. He's a nice guy. <laughs> he's a really nice guy. Dennis Franz, great guy, great actor, great show. Tuesday night nine. Here we got 3.58 left, third quarter. And Miami's putting on a show at the 21-yard line of the Huskies. Nice play fake Dorsey straight down the middle and he got it complete inside the five. It's first and goal. Zips it down to Najee Davenport again. What a weapon to, to be able to get a back down the middle of the field. Usually it's a tight end. But you use a little play fake and then you get the fullback down the middle of the field who can catch the ball and go up and make a play. This drive, the fifth one that started for Miami and Washington Territory, and now they've got it first and goal. Just inside the four. And he throws it out here one-on-one. Going to have to hurry. There it is. Quick slant. Touchdown. You called it. Andre Johnson on a slant. And Dorsey's thrown another one, his third of the night. Well, he had single coverage. Johnson hadn't caught a touchdown pass tonight. So he's got 10 touchdown receptions in 10 games. So Kenny just, Dorsey made one misfire tonight with a bad ball that was intercepted, but he's thrown three touchdown the passes. The offense hadn't did much the first half. Now they're just kind of getting, getting, uh, they work all week on all <laughs> these plays, and they'd only had the ball six minutes and 50 seconds the first half. So they said, Coach, let us go out and throw some, do something, run some. Penalty marker on the extra Illegal point. substitution against the defense. 12 men on the field. Well, 12 guys out there trying to stop the extra point. Again. A little slant. 
Johnson on the right side, a little slant to the inside. If you get inside of that receiver, I mean, of that defensive back, and you don't have any help, you can't stop it. And Dorsey put it in a great spot, put a lot of mustard on it, and he threw it low, and Johnson went down and got it. And we're going to go down to Swanee. Hey, Brad, I'm reminiscing a little bit. I'm under the stadium where, when I was here for Super Bowl 10 and 13, they brought us down here that scored it for press conferences. There's the locker room we had for Super Bowl 10 and 13. But you know what's really interesting? I came over here on this wall, and look what I found. <laughs> it's, it's a picture of Bob Greasy. It, and it's faded. It's, you can't touch it. They got something over it. But it almost looks like he's colorized. It used to be black and white, and they just... Is that right, Bob? <laughs> It looks like an old gone with a wind or something hey, with that coloring. They're setting me up, folks. Can't they find a better spot hey, to put that picture I'll in? I'll get even with these guys. They're setting <laughs> me up. You're not even throwing it. We got to blow out here. You're scrambling. We, you know, we got to blow out. We got, you know, looking for things to do here. Holy cow. And they're, and they're really working me over. <laughs> I wonder why you guys were turning on all these lights up here. There's got to be a better Swanee, spot for that picture. I'll get Swanee. even. Swanee's buffing it up you're, a little you're, bit. You're really you, faded down here, too. You know, just, it's, <laughs> I it's think that's mold. Up. I think that's mold down there in the bottom. It's probably gotten damp hey, down there at times. Swanee, you say I'm faded. When you turned your head toward that machine, oh. <laughs> you're, you're thinning a little bit. What do you mean? You're talking about my hair fading? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're thinning a little bit back there, Barty. Yeah, Barty. well. well. Oh, it's this, been a I long you, time, Bob, for both of us. <laughs> I told you I'd get even. This I is, just didn't think it'd be that quick. I was trying not to turn my head. <laughs> this is getting as ugly as this game is. Here's a kick. Well, my kids are watching this, Bob. They're not going to be happy with you. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Frederick had the kick return, and Washington goes back to work. 51 to 7 after that touchdown reception by Johnson. Reminder next Saturday night, Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, 8 o'clock Eastern, live next Saturday. And it'll be Colorado and Texas. And a week ago or so, if you'd have said that, everybody thought you were crazy. Oh, isn't that the truth? I kiddingly said that. You know, everybody was expecting a rematch, Nebraska, Oklahoma. Right. I said, hey, wait a minute. It could be Colorado, Texas. And, you know, sure nobody enough. ever talked about Colorado being anywhere. Mac Brown's team with just one loss. That was to Oklahoma in the regular season, but they have played it through and not lost again. And but Gary Barnett. Haven't. Gary Barnett, yeah, Gary the job he job. did. Colorado. And if they play like they did against Nebraska, they'll give Texas all kinds of fits, and uh, who knows? If you haven't heard what we're alluding to is the fact that Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma today if you didn't see the score early and Jeremy Stevens at tight end got a big big head start I don't know if the penalty is going to go on him or if it's on Miami here prior to the snap false start offense five yard penalty still second down I think Jeremy might have been the intended receiver on that because he came flying oh out he of did there. He, he has not been real sharp. As we mentioned, he missed a lot of the season, and he just got back last week. He's not been real sharp. Um, jumped offside a couple times, dropped a couple of balls. So it's second down at 16. Draw play. Hurst with some open field. That's outside. Got across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Let's check in Times Square Stadium in New York again. Here's John. Brad, Georgia Tech and Georgia in a pretty good one. Georgia looking to add to a lead. George Godson is picked off by Tim Wansley, and he does add to that lead, taking it in for the touchdown. Right now it stands at 28 to 17. There's about eight minutes left in this one. You see Haynes having a terrific day. Brad. Georgia Tech trying to win the fourth straight in that series, and you got to go way back in the late 50s, early 60s, the last time that's happened against Georgia. So the dogs trying to get a little bit of payback. But a tough year for Georgia Leary, huh? They yeah. had talk of a championship maybe up there in uh, Atlanta. Only about seven points away from being undefeated, but that isn't going to happen. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Kia Motors, makers of a full line of quality cars at affordable prices. Burger King, home of the Whopper. Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments. Discover the power of Pacific Life. And new Nivea for men after shave, skin balm, more evolved skin care. 
There we go. Watch this. Do a little shake and rattle and roll. Yeah, they got a little Nivea in there shake, on there. I rattle think. and roll. Oh, that's good. They got hooked together. With the helmets hooked. Mm -hmm. And Reggie Williams makes a catch. That's a first down. This kid, the future is awfully bright for him. 6'4, yeah. 215. Tremendous amount of confidence in his own abilities. He dropped the first two passes of his college career. Rick Neuheisel said, you know, we were kind of wondering now, what, what's going on in his mind? And he hasn't dropped many since. He's caught four tonight, 58 yeah. yards. First down with that one out at the 45-yard line. Chris Singleton in the backfield now. And he gets the call. Lewis made the stop. Singleton, a freshman. Brad and Bob, I asked Reggie Williams what's the difference between his playing ability now than uh, when he started the first season. He says, what I do now better is run my routes. He said, I used to round them off. Now they're much more crisp. He says, and better understanding of defense. He said, I'm doing a better job getting off the jams. He's got a, he's got a three-year plan, and it seems to be working well for him at the moment. Hey, Swanee, what do you think about his uh, confidence level after playing against this defense here tonight? Down the middle, intercepted by Lewis. And Lewis going the other way. Fourth pick of the night. Lewis still on his feet. Ball came loose. And still Miami's. They've covered it. Howard Clark with the fumble recovery after the long return by Lewis. That's at five takeaways, four interceptions, and one fumble. Pickett never even sees him. He was just leading from right to left, and he should have looked ahead of the receiver. Just threw it out there, and Lewis, Lewis picks off, and Pickett makes the uh, makes the fumble. That's the third interception for Lewis this year. So for the first time tonight, we have a guy that has had interceptions previously this season. We yeah. have three first-time interceptors in the two linebackers, Campbell and Vilma. And McDougal, the defensive lineman, finally a DB gets his hands on one, and he knows what to do with it. He runs it back to the 22-yard line. Now Frank Gore. Gore down to the 10. It's first and goal, Miami. Man, oh, man, they got some weapons. Bob, you asked that question about Reggie Williams, but the answer applies to everybody, offense and defense, of the Washington football team. What happens in a game like this is you get the chance to measure yourself against maybe one of the best football teams in the program, maybe the best football team in the country this year. And now you understand what it takes to be number one. Then you go back and you work on all those things, whether you're on the offensive line, defensive line, secondary receiver, quarterback. Now you go work on all those things in the spring. Then you come back with the resolve to be the champion to your conference and to compete against the Miami, the Florida States, the Colorados, and Nebraska's of the country. Timeout taken by Miami, and that's their last one. I don't think they're going to need them. You know, uh, we talked to Rick Neuheisel this week, Brad, and he said one of the things that he did was he called Frank Beamer. He says, says well, he says, I got Miami. What, what can you tell me? <laughs> well, Frank's got him. Frank's got Miami next week. <laughs> So whatever he may have told him, I don't think was any, any good. It's definitely their house. And tonight with the seniors, they're all coming out to a standing ovation right now. Gonzalez and yep. those guys. Took them all out. What a group. Shockey's not a senior. He is a junior. But Gonzalez and Bibla and McKinney along that offensive line. There's Romberg. There's the group. And Al Gore in there. Getting the call. And getting about three, maybe four. Roderick Green made the stop. So nice gesture, not only by Larry Coker to allow his seniors to get that standing ovation, but uh, <laughs> those guys can rest for an extra 15 minutes. Nobody got hurt tonight. Uh, Lewis, remember, got banged up, and he just came back in and had an interception, so he's all right. Right. And now the fourth quarter, I don't think they have to worry about it belonging to them because the whole game has already. End of three. 51-7 to seven, Miami.
He certainly didn't hurt his chances tonight. Yeah. Well, you know, it seems to me like, unlike other years, there aren't any, nobody's stepping forward. Everybody's kind of backing up. They're not a clear-cut favorite. Kudiv's in at quarterback, by the way. You saw Dorsey with a cap on on the sideline. Here's a run by Gore down to about the five-yard line. You saw Gonzalez with some of his uh, family and friends wearing his jersey number and getting some hugs. One of the seniors that won't have to play anymore in this fourth quarter can take a break. His hair's getting long. He says there's a reason. Not cutting it till the national championship. I'm not cutting it until we get to California, baby. That's, you know, everybody has their little different things on the team. And early on in the season, you know, you might have seen me with a beard because I didn't, we didn't shave our beards to, like, basically all the offensive line until, like, the first, to, to the day after the first game. And we beat Penn State. And then everybody has their different quirks. And me and our center, Brett Robert, are, you know, you can remember from last year with the long hair, the kind of the rock star look. So, I'm like, all right, I'll do that with you this year. So, not a bad deal. Day after the Rose Bowl, it gets cut then. Yeah, if you guys want to show up and pay for it, I'll be really happy to invite you. <laughs> the day after the Rose Bowl, the hair gets cut, and he invited us to come out and pay for it. I think we'll skip that trip, but you saw he and Romberg hugging over there. They're the two guys that are letting it go shaggy till Pasadena. I think Keith had probably splurged for those two haircuts. Keith Jackson, yeah, Jackson uh, he's going to be doing the championship game at yep. the Rose Bowl this year. He can fit the bill. He's got enough dough. Yeah. So now it's fourth and goal just outside the one. Gore, the tailback. And he'll get the call, and he'll get the touchdown standing up. You put in the guys that don't play that much, although Gore does, but the guys leading the way in front of him haven't gotten a lot of time, and uh, you can't blame them for wanting to play, and you certainly can't keep them from scoring. That's just straightaway football. And Gore from a yard makes it 57 to 7. High snap. Seaver's got it up and good, though. Last week, Miami scored 59. This week, 57. 58 now. 58. They did give up a touchdown tonight, though. That's something they didn't do last week. Our Thanksgiving feast presented by Siemens the last few days and uh, Miami uh, everything from here on out's gravy I guess it's 58 to 7 they will be the number one team in everything both polls and the BCS on Monday the interesting thing will be who will be number two and three you would think Florida but uh, you know we'll have to wait and see how far will Nebraska drop exactly how far will Nebraska drop Oklahoma with two losses should be out of the top five or six so uh, Florida and or uh, Texas and Oregon are the ones uh, that should benefit and move up to maybe two three and four depending on how far Nebraska drops Seavers another great kick knocked it out of the end zone Pontiac drive summary 11 drives seven touchdowns six possessions for Miami inside the red zone inside the 20 six possessions six touchdowns they didn't have to drive very far a lot of times they were just pulling out of the parking lot and yeah. uh, you Miami, know, maybe through the driveway that was about it Miami's had the ball 46 plays tonight 38 of them have been in Washington territory that's just amazing pick it back to throw overshot Arnold is intended receiver Fitzgerald was back there covering. Tony Pickett's had a tough night, and he'll have a lot of bright moments in his Husky career. He's a tough kid. 6'4", about 210. And he's been knocked down and beat up and sacked and intercepted three times. Well, this, this is like uh, going to the top of the mountain right here. Actually, he's been intercepted four times. Next year, he'll compare all the other schools the other teams and these defenses to this one yep and he's intercepted a fifth time Fitzgerald's got this one everybody's in on the act for it's Miami it's the second interception of the year for Fitzgerald he is the fifth defensive back he doesn't even start Sixth Washington turnover. Alstrom, you see there, the intended receiver, and it's underthrown, and Fitzgerald goes up and just snatches it. 
So five interceptions, two by defensive backs, two by linebackers, one by a defensive end. We'd show you a shot of defensive coordinator Randy Shannon if we could. He's up in the press box, and we'd, we'd be, the kid get a camera on him, or we'd show him. McGahee, and McGahee trying to come back from having some injury problems recently and probably losing his number two tailback job to Frank Gore in the process just rips off a 12-yard run. That's what I mean about everybody's getting involved. Yeah. But Randy Shannon turned this defense around. He was with the Dolphins the last three near years. He's all the way in the back. You can see him. Here? Nope. Down on the far, the far end. Beyond. 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 Yeah, he's beyond. He's a guy without the cap. Without the cap. You can't see him. I couldn't see him. Is he there? It's because you needed those glasses. You had in that picture in that helmet. Right. Here's a <laughs> <laughs> You're trying a long ball in the corner for Gathers incomplete. Guys, you're talking about Randy Shannon. There he is. And I, I have to tell you, he is, he is one of the outstanding young coaches. He's a defensive coordinator. I mean, one day down the road, he was a young man. The way he coaches a team, instills confidence, and understands the game will be an excellent head coach. He's very pragmatic about the way he goes about his business. He doesn't get too high when things go right. He doesn't get too down when things go wrong. He's very level-headed when we have a chance to sit down and talk to him. It's, it's a pretty even keel. He's got a sharp football mind. Here's McGahee. And Larry Coker has said, that defense is Randy Shannon's. I don't touch it. Well, he certainly has them all playing well. The defensive line, he rolls in eight defensive linemen young group of uh, linebackers and about six or seven defensive backs and they are all aggressive they're attacking trying to sack the quarterback and they're attacking trying to get pickoffs and they like i said they lead the nation in turnovers and takeaways a pontiac first and ten is about two yards away from where miami has it right now kudik's going to try to throw for it maybe Scrambles away. Now he's got room in front of him. Throws anyway. He should have kept that and gotten the first down. Instead, he was incomplete with the throw. And it's fourth down in a couple. And no matter how you slice it, it looks like, you know, more points are upcoming. If Larry Coker doesn't kick a field goal here, it looks like he's running things up. If he does, he's going to have 61 points. I mean, and as you said, the guys that don't play much want to play, so they're going to play right here, fourth down. There's no perfect solution to being up on the scoreboard this lopsided and making everybody happy, including your opponent. So fourth down and two from the 15. Crudip, nice play fake. Wanted the naked bootleg, and he's going to go down. So he loses about five, and the Huskies will take over on downs. Good defense there. 11:40 remaining in the ball game. Miami cruising right now, 58 to seven. Our Pacific Life game summary. It all started on the first series to unravel for Washington. Vilma's interception, one of many tonight. Campbell, the other linebacker, had one. McDougal not only picked it off, the big defensive lineman took it all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. Cody Pickett has had a rough, rough night. This Miami defense is just too good. And he's been intercepted five times, sacked four times. And John Vilma with the ice pack on his bicep. New quarterback is in. Cody Pickett's night was not good, and it's done. And that means that Taylor Barton's in at the controls for the Huskies from their own 20. Boss on the play. Alexis maybe got back to the line, uh, line of scrimmage. With 11.30 left here, let's go to Times Square Stadium in New York. Here's John. Well, Brad, we've got one that's a little bit tighter between Notre Dame and Stanford. The Irish have led throughout the game, but Casey Moore here punches this one across. The seven points gets it to 13-10. There's about six minutes left in the game. We'll let you know what happens. Brad, back to you. All right, John, thanks. A little bit tighter, I guess so. A little bit tighter. <laughs> this one, this yeah. one couldn't get any looser. 
<laughs> How about last week, 59 to nothing? Uh, yeah, John knows what we're going through. Pick up a maybe a yard on the carry. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Pontiac. What would you do with some Pontiac excitement? Budweiser, who salutes America's designated drivers. Verizon Wireless, join in. And new Pepsi Twist, Pepsi and Diet Pepsi with a twist of lemon. Miami has twisted and turned Washington every way but loose tonight. They lead 58 to 7. It's third down and nine for the Huskies. Martin's throw incomplete. Arnold got a hand on it. All right, you got first year coach. He's 10 and 0. You vote for him for coach of the year. What about my man Ralph Friedgen up in uh, Maryland? Mm -hmm. Gary Croton out in BYU. Yep. Who do It'll you, be tough. Who do you vote for? Well, I don't know. I think the, the cupboard was fuller here, but you still have to coach him. And Ralph, I think, maybe I mean, with the I, most amazing job. I think the job Friedgen did in Maryland. I think even, even if even if Coker would win a national championship, I, I don't know. Here's a kick. Ed Reed's going to take this punt return at the 40. Edward Reed, a little dipsy do outside. Got about 16 on the run back. And he's not even the regular punt returner. Reed, one of the great players in college football. You talk about awards, and uh, if that guy's not the Thorpe Award winner as the best defensive back, he's going to be in the top three. Oh, he is in the top three. And he's in with some good ones. Quinton Jammer from Texas and Roy Williams from Oklahoma. But this kid, it'd be hard. It'd be hard not to give it to him. There's a few roses down there on the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> Being passed around. Well. And that's not because it's Valentine's Day. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be showing those to um, Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech and the, and the boys up there. They do want to show their fans, though, I'm sure. And that's kind of why they're being passed around. McGay, he breaks out of the pack. And he's got a tough run for a first down. Jonathan Vilma started it all with the interception. And he said, you know, the reception we got from the Husky fans out in Seattle was not too cool last year. I remember the fans after the game, how they acted towards us after we lost that game. I remember the taunting that was going on, the taunting on the way to the locker room from the players, the Washington players and the fans. And uh, I remember that they, they didn't really handle themselves with class after they beat us. So that really stuck in my mind. It was pretty vivid. You could tell when he was telling us that story that uh, that's something he won't forget until probably tonight he'll get it out of his system. And yeah. it's amazing because the coaches all week long as the media tried to make something of the fact that uh, Washington was a team that was 2 0 against Miami in the short, but as Bob said, very potent series in that they broke a long winning streak here and then wrecked their season last year and given them their only loss. And uh, the coaches kind of tried to stay away from all that. Larry Coker says, you know, we don't need revenge as a factor. Yeah. I think just the fact that we're trying to get the national championship is more important. But when you talk to the kids, <laughs> they had a little different view on yeah. it. Yeah, and, 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 and Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, says you can't go out there with revenge in mind because you won't play well. You'll forget what you're supposed to do. You, you forget your assignments. You'll just try to do, do jam the guy. You'll try to get physical with him uh, when you shouldn't. And, uh, and they, Mike Rumpf, Rump did that with Penn State. He played a very poor game uh, against uh, Penn State two years ago. Two years ago, and then tried to get even with him and, and didn't play well at all. And so he put Mike up kind of on the, the front of the group and said, We don't want what happened to Mike Rump to happen to you guys, not stay in focus. And he said, Mike, was that the worst game you ever played? He says, Yes, sir. <laughs> so the example was made. Yeah. Third down five. Here's McGay. He was running awfully well since he's come in here. They, this this Miami team, uh, Brad, and I've been around a lot of them, is, uh, and the players and the quality of the players is a heck of a lot different yeah. than they had in the, the late 80s and the early 90s. You know, Schnellenberger won a championship. Jimmy Johnson won a championship. Uh, Dennis Erickson won two championships. But Butch Davis didn't win a championship, but he was the guy that was, was, was instructed to turn this program around. He uh, for three seasons he went without 31 scholarships and and had a losing season in there, but really turned the program around. Bumble. 
Okay, he dropped it, and he got it back. That's the way things are going for this team. You're absolutely right, Bob. And, you know, in spending time, and we've done so many Miami games, we've been around these kids a lot, and there's a couple that have some swagger. Portis has got a little bit of that old, I guess, what everybody remembered from Miami. But a lot of these kids are uh, so businesslike, and, yeah. and they're fun to be around, and they're not a bunch of woofers and, and talkers. And uh, quality kids. Yeah. Quality kids. They, they refer to that quiet confidence as the uh, uh, silent violence. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of it this afternoon. No doubt this about evening. it. The fullback straight ahead, close to the 15. Kyle Cobia on the carry. Loban Don, the linebacker, made the stop. And we're down under seven minutes. Well, next Saturday they go against Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech uh, lost a couple of games uh, earlier in the season. They lost uh, at home against Syracuse. They lost on the road at Pittsburgh. And at that point, they had already worked their way all the way up to about exactly. fifth in but, the polls. But look at the look at the Miami Virginia Tech series. Miami's lost five of the last six, and the last three up there at Va Tech. Not an easy place to play. Good defense. Tough very, place. Tough crowd. Tough very everything. Good, very good defense. And you never know what the weather is going to be. And our extended forecast. We talked about this this morning, and we got our. <laughs> Crack staff looking it up. It's going to be a little. It isn't going to be 75 and sunny. I'll tell you that much. No, it isn't. As long as it's not snowing, I'll be okay on the <laughs> sideline. Not that you guys can concern about me getting wet. Yeah, we're always concerned about you, Swanee. And cold weather, the Miami team does not like particularly, yep. or it just fell that way. But it'll be a different story next Saturday afternoon, and we'll be there to bring it to you. I think the biggest thing. And we've had their games the last two weeks, and they've scored 59 points last week against Syracuse and 58 here tonight as the game was here in the Orange Bowl. Mm -hmm. They play very well in the Orange Bowl against quality opponents. But next week, they'll be on the road, and it's a little bit different when you don't have that, that crowd and uh, the conveniences, and you got to go on the road, and, and uh, you really got to hang together as a team. When you got your pads off, you know that you've done your work, and the seniors and uh, the linemen there, including Juan Gonzalez, came out with about 28 seconds left in the third quarter to a standing ovation on their final home appearance. Crudup dancing around, finally throws, has a man open, and caught it. Touchdown. Jason Gather stayed with it. Crudup threw a strike. Well, he danced around, bought some time. Got hit by Zach Tuyas open when he let go, and he still got it there. Good throw. And Dorsey with a big smile there, waiting to meet him to congratulate him that's on the his, touchdown toss. That's his first touchdown pass of his career. Screwed up. He had run for one this year, but never thrown for one. And Jason gathers, gathered it. Goodip hung in there, took a shot right in the chin. Gathers on the other end, gathers it in the corner. Miami with everybody in the act, 65 to 7. Away from the field, D. Pickett, Cody Pickett's dad, who spent 20 years on the pro rodeo circuit. And in fact, in 84, was the national champion cowboy. And doing a little, little pig stringing right there. Pretty good time. I was looking at the poor cow. <laughs> the calf. That's pretty good time. And, and Cody over there spent the summer doing that. Uh, sophomore year, he earned $30,000 in one summer. I found out from the coaches one summer on the team roping uh, situation. And you know, that's not an easy thing to do. He's a tough kid. He can handle this. I got on the horse oh and I tried roping Sebastian over here during halftime. You see, and I got him. That was actually my second try. Nice toss, Swanee. I saw it. Sebastian kind of helped you, though. He kind of helped me a little bit. And the Miami Police <laughs> Mountain Division helped me out with the horse there. But that's, that's a hard thing to do when the horse is moving oh, and you're roping the cow. Swanee back in the saddle again, like old Gene Autry riding champion. That was a pretty good toss, though. Ranger. Well, there you go. 
Everybody's got their silver, their trigger, their champion. You got to have one. <laughs> Swanee does a little bit of everything, doesn't he? Yeah. He's been in the bowels of the stadium. He's been on horseback. He's been everywhere. He was firing cannons last week. 65 to 7 is our score. Somebody please hold the football for the kicker, would you? So we can all get out of here. We got five minutes left in this game. I'm begging somebody to hold that for Todd Seavers to not make the pain any longer. John Taylor will do that. Thanks, Sean. Oh, you won. Alexis and Frederick are back deep. At the goal line, Alexis. And Rich, man, did he get tattooed at about the 16-yard line. Our aerial views of the Orange Bowl provided by Budweiser's own Budweiser.com airship. Seen by millions on its ongoing Goodwill tour. This Bud's for you, and thanks for being with us, fellas, tonight. Great shots, beautiful scene on a beautiful night. Just wasn't very pretty for the Huskies and their fans. First down at the 16-yard line. Singleton back in there in the backfield. Barton at the controls at quarterback. Singleton got a couple. Howard Clark, the middle linebacker, made the stop. And those teams got together was Falk and work done back and forth and back and forth. Maybe more of that Monday night nine Eastern right here on ABC. Second down at seven. Barton holds it a long time, goes down the middle, and he got his man. He hit Williams. And the big freshman's got 11 more yards to his credit. That's what's happened the last two games. Largest margin of victory in back-to-back -back wins against ranked teams. Ranked remember? teams, yeah. Mm -hmm. Syracuse came in trying to battle Miami for the Big East crown. Lost that battle. And Washington came in here ranked 11th in the BCS poll tonight. And they suffered the same fate. Syracuse was beating Boston College, weren't they? They were beating them last time I looked by, uh, I think, a couple of touchdowns. Barton, quick slant. Williams has another one. Nice move. 15 more for Williams. Miami, Miami has their second unit on the field at the time. Right. Down to three and a half minutes. There's Mount McKinney. I think Brian McKinney hadn't given up a sack his career. And Ken Dorsey is happy that he hasn't given up a sack in his career. He's got that wall to stand behind. A quick opening draw that opens up for Singleton. I wouldn't be surprised to see Miami's first team defense come back on the field. They are very proud of the fact that they lead the nation in scoring defense. The back-to-back -back games with this many points, also a school record that has stood since 1933. I don't know if Howard Buck was still coaching him in 33 or not. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He had a pretty good squad in 26, though. Here's Barton. <laughs> Throw short. Oh, almost another interception. That would have been another linebacker pick by Howard Clark. You think I'm kidding? I know my Howard Buck. <laughs> 26 to 28. He had started 8-0 as a rookie coach. Look at some of these guys he's got. There's Howard. Look at that guy sitting next to him, though. <laughs> what do you think that kid's doing right now? He didn't look big enough to play football or old enough to play football. Oh boy, we go back in the archives. We dig, we dig up a little bit of everything else. We uh, got, we got we, everything. <laughs> we, <laughs> we prepare for these blowouts. Yeah. <laughs> Not well enough. <laughs> At the 34, Barton got to throw it in a hurry, incomplete. You know, the youth on this uh, Miami team is amazing, too. We talked about a lot of the seniors that will be gone, but the guys behind them are young and good. And you mentioned uh, Kenny Dorsey. He doesn't even turn 21 until late April. Uh, that just gives you an indication of how good he is at such a young age. Yeah. And 
Speaking of birthdays, Mrs. Greasy has a birthday today. Shay, happy birthday. Shea. If you're still watching this, God love you, Shay. 11.30, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of late. She'd probably be uh, in bed with Maggie yeah, about this time. She, she and you better clarify that. Maggie's the dog. Maggie's the yellow yeah, lab, yeah. That, that doesn't sound good right away there. Martin. But Shay, happy birthday if you're still watching. Complete to Reddick. I don't know if it's John Saunders' birthday. I doubt it. He's had a long week. Let's check in with him in New York. It feels like a year has passed since we last cut in here. Stanford against Notre Dame. Kenneth Tolan, one yard out, takes it in. They get the extra point. So the four-point cushion at 17 to 13. Stanford then came up with an interception. So it looks like no winning season for the Irish. Uh -oh. oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yep. And you know what all that means. Here's a give. Matthias Wilson, the fullback, gets a carry. We're down to the final two minutes from the Orange Bowl. Just been our little home away from home the last couple of weeks. Miami's only trailed in a football game one time this year. That was to Pittsburgh, seven to six. They've been tied a couple of times. Say that again. They've only trailed one time this year in a football game, seven to six to the Pitt Panthers. This is their tenth game. And now they're going to have a 20 game winning streak and they are going to more than make up for. Nice play at the very end there by Clark the linebacker that looked like it was going to be a touchdown. Maybe it's not a nice play. There's a flag down. I didn't think he hit him until the ball got there. Singleton was the intended receiver. Well, let's take a look. Here comes the linebacker. It's Clark. There's nothing wrong well, it hit there. Him in the helmet. It hit Clark in the helmet. So. Yeah, nothing wrong there. Shouldn't be interference. The ball never got to the receiver, and it hit the defender in the helmet, and he made a good play. Fast interference against the defense. 15-yard penalty. No, no, no. That's a bad call. Oh, no, no, no. no. There, there's no pass. To you. And, you know, I'm, and I don't get on officials, but there was no pass interference on that shot that we had. Maybe somewhere else, but not on that one. No. Nope. No way. You know, we, uh, these officials do a good job most all the time, and, uh, you know, we don't criticize them, but that was not a, that was not, that was a good play, Howard Clark. I will say one other thing. They missed a fumble in yep, the first true. half. That's true. Barton. Play action. He's got a lot of time. Lofts it. Almost intercepted. Roll made a nice play on the ball. And another flag down. All kinds of time to throw the football. You can tell that first group is not in there rushing the passer. Maybe he had all that time because somebody was holding. That's a personal foul on Miami. So half the distance to the goal. The Miami front line defenders are not going to like this because if Washington yeah. gets a touchdown here, it doesn't look as impressive to them. No, but you've got to let these the, the, the second guys play. They work all Absolutely. week in practice. So this is the second line. Clark, Thomas, McClover. So it's Singleton, the tailback, as they have it first and goal now. Washington does. Just inside the Miami three-yard line. Singleton gets the call. He's met head on by Clark, the guy who they just called the penalty on. And Clark knocks him backward. Howard Clark, 45, was a starting linebacker last year and is the backup to uh, John Vilma this year. So they've got some depth in that defensive uh, linebacker position. Notre Dame and Stanford is a final. The Cardinal wins it by four. They've had a pretty impressive season in the Pac-10. This season was going pretty well for Rick Neuheisel at 8 and 2 before tonight. 
Third down and goal. Well, they've got third down on the marker. I guess it's second down and goal. And almost a fumble it is. Covered by one of the offensive linemen, Aaron Butler, got back on it. Thomas that got through the line, number 56, and caused the fumble. Five seconds left in the game. Timeout taken by Washington. That'll get a chorus of boos, no doubt. We'll take a timeout with them. Final play of the ball game is coming up. Five seconds left in a 65 to 7 game. And a timeout was called. They put five seconds back on, so actually 10 seconds left. Might be a couple plays here if needed. Third and goal for Washington. I think everybody's tired. They had the third down marker up last play. Now they got it back to second. I don't think they have any idea what's going on out there. But it is third and goal. You can see the marker on the far side says second down. Trust me, it's third down. Everybody on the Miami sideline is up. All the players are standing. They want to stop. Miami almost jumps in the neutral zone. And now there's a flag down. So much to do about. So little. So little here at the end of the game. <laughs> if I read Rick's Popping lips out. right. It seemed like he Ball said, starts. if you don't get a call okay. timeout. Five yards. <laughs> yes. No second down. If you got them, you use them. They got two timeouts left. And now, third and goal back at the ten and a half yard line. Don't forget, we'll be in Blacksburg next week. Miami trying to stay perfect. Oregon State, Oregon, Notre Dame, Purdue, the other games right here on ABC. The Big 12, Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, 8 o'clock Eastern next Saturday night. Barton goes to the end zone. It's intercepted. Everybody in on the act. Antrell Roll, the sixth interception of the night by the Miami defense. And the seventh turnover overall. Antrell Roll is a third string safety. Getting some time in the ball game. That's a duck. Underthrown. Seven turnovers, six interceptions, as you mentioned. And McDougal has one of them, including a touchdown. He says, Yeah, we held him to seven. So that's the way it will end. And we'll next see the Hurricanes in Blacksburg. Virginia Tech is the, the only team that stands between them and a trip to the Rose Bowl and the Rose Bowl Parade, and all the other things that go along with Pasadena. How nice. One what? more hurdle. If, if they get there, they're going to have a great time. One more hurdle left. This one was not a hurdle. It wasn't even a bump in the road. Our Chevrolet Most Valuable Players, Jerome McDougal with that interception. He had a fumble recovery as well. And Rich Alexis, who went to high school here in the area, had a pretty good night offensively for the Huskies. In recognition of their effort, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. We thank you for being with us from the Orange Bowl tonight. Skins game, don't forget, tomorrow, 3.30. Norman, Harnovic, Montgomery, and Woods will be there. 65 to 7 is the final. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler. So long from the Orange Bowl in Miami. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword ABC Sports. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence. From Miami, good night.